Survivor Specialist Phil and Alexa are back for our third Survivor Edge of Extinction tell-all, completing the Lesu 3 trio here. We are joined by my winner pick, <laughs> Lauren O'Connell. Lauren, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, we're really excited to talk to you. We got a little, we got a little hint at what you were going to be talking about, something with cars <laughs> and orange cars or something. Um, <laughs> when you jumped in at the end of Kelly's podcast, anybody who missed that. You should watch Ke it. You should, you watch, should it. watch it. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Lauren said that she didn't watch it back yet, but War Dog rewatched his whole three and a half hour podcast. So. <laughs> yeah, he, well, he's actually watched it three times back. <laughs> he, he is all 10,000 views on his own video. <laughs> yes. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah. So, Lauren, you have to cross the 10,000 view threshold because right now, War Dog is the only one who's crossed it. Uh, him and Adam Klein are the only two tell alls we've done. Oh, my God. 10, I, last time I checked, it was like at 8,000. Has he watched it 2,000 times? That's him studying for the bar. That's what he's doing. <laughs> okay, everybody watching right now, send it to all your friends so we can beat War Dog. Yes. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. That's the promotion we needed. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, Lauren, um, we're going to be talking about the less who three. You kind of were like the quieter of the three. Yeah. So this should be really interesting because War Dog and Kelly, we saw a lot of their moves in the game. We, did. we didn't get to see a lot of your moves from the edit right away. So I'm really curious to hear what you're going to say and if you're going to agree with every single word that came out of Kelly's mouth <laughs> yeah. or every only single some. one that came out of War Dog. Everything, mm. everything. It's, it's a mix. I know War Dog has said previously that our relationship is like War Dog and Kelly are step siblings. And I'm the kid that came from the marriage, you know, so like I can keep us together. Um, it is a very odd dynamic um, and they are big characters. And I don't know if I was the one keeping them sane or if we all at different times were keeping each other sane, but I have some deep love for those two. I had some crazy parents, some dysfunctional parents. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I yeah, I don't, I don't know, I don't know how you put up with that the entire time, Lauren. Although I will say that it seems like you and Kelly, like immediately, it didn't matter what she, she could have looked you in the eye and been like, yeah. Lauren, she really we're not going to get along, and you would have been like, oh my god, I love you're you. so right. <laughs> <laughs> I think Kelly and I have such an interesting relationship, and it was funny. Well, honestly, I feel like we should start with our relationship, Phil and Alexa, starting out with our relationship of watching your podcast from the very beginning. And all you guys did was crap on my preseason video. <laughs> oh, I have a very short attention span. <laughs> I what exactly did. What was my issue? I'm pretty sure it went along the lines of, could she say she was a division one athlete any more times? I just, I'm like, just to clarify for those who are listening, Lauren is a division one athlete. Yeah, she is. Oh, is. Lauren, I, I, I have something for you too. I <laughs> Amazing. Yeah, I am with you on that. It was funny watching it all back because I was like so nervous, obviously, at the time, but I listened to these and I'm like, oh my God, somebody <laughs> tranquilized me. It's so mm -hmm. bad. It's so bad. So, you know what? I relatively agreed with you, but you could have shown a little bit more love. We I were <laughs> Phil, I, I won't say we because I know that I know that this was very much me. I actually I know that you two met in in May, and Phil drunk texted me at like 6 a.m. my time and 3 a.m. your time. He was like, by the way, Lauren thinks you hate her. And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> I re-listened to every single podcast. I was like, I supported Lauren so much. Where did I where did I fuck up? And then I <laughs> one comment and I was like, oh God, that was weird. <laughs> no, it's it's all love. I think I watched, I watched you guys more because of it, because I was like, you know what? I respect that. I was annoyed. I get it. I get it. But yeah, so that that's how our relationship started and all love. But um, And yeah. I'm over here picking you to win the game based on all of that pregame press. So it tells you how much I know, I guess. Or like... Anyone who told me, hey, um, I picked you for my winner pick from pregame press. I'm like, really? Yeah. yeah? Like I wouldn't have picked me for pregame like winner for my pregame press, but okay, sure, yeah. Well, uh, and and out of I had it was between you and Eric, and then you end up winning, and then I picked my whole fantasy team, and you're the last player left who was on my fantasy team, and I had that really great fantasy team. You did um, have a good fantasy team. I kept laughing every time you were like, "Oh my fantasy team, my fantasy team is still intact." I'm like, you brought that up pretty often. 
He did. He really <laughs> yeah. Did. Also, also uh, since Kelly called me out for it anyway, uh, could you tell who I thought was going to win for the second half of the season? Or oh god, it's so up in the air. <laughs> it would be between Victoria and Victoria, right? Yeah, it was something like that. I don't, it was I, I don't think he was that into Victoria. I don't know. He seemed a little bored of her. <laughs> yeah. This is. But this is this is how I go though. I picked Michelle to win back in the day because she was from New Jersey. I'm from New Jersey. Yeah. I like I jumped on the Victoria bandwagon because she was a redhead, and I hope that I would be as smart as her when I'm playing the game. And I picked you because D1 athletes, Lauren. Yes, we're both yes. D1 I, athletes. I, I, I you know, D1 athlete. If you're wondering. Not yes. Even, but I was. Phil Wood was actually as well a D1 athlete. Phil. Yeah. Take I didn't say it. I don't know if I said it in any of the videos, but Lauren, also me, D1 athlete. So there's I two D1 athletes. Had a connection. Here. I that's what it was. That's, that's literally watched. the reason that's I picked you to win. I just don't think I said it in so many words. Lauren, that's that's why I was so against you at the beginning, because I was not athletic enough. I was a sorority <laughs> girl, so that was my problem. I don't know. If you saw my uh, my challenge performance at Lesu, I wasn't that athletic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're going to get into these challenge performances. Yeah, well, yeah, I think that's there. going to be necessary. Yeah, we really um, should, we should start with my Kelly, my Kelly fandom, though, really. Please, please. Yes. So I would yeah. say... I was in love with Kelly before I even stepped on the boat, right? And I know that Wardog touched on it in his podcast as well, but we're all at that Ponderosa pregame, right? And there were 16 of us because we had two alternates. And I remember thinking, no way we're playing with 16 people. There's just, there's no way. And we get on the boat and there were 14 of us because those two um, didn't make the show. And I remember thinking, 14? Like, where is this, where's the other tribe coming? I was thinking, honestly, that we were going to be seven and seven and then have another tribe come in and play with 21 because I had no idea what was going on. Um, and I didn't even really think that we would have returners. Um, it didn't even cross my mind. But the second Jeff started talking, I was like, he's about to bring returners. 100% he's about to bring returners. And then, I mean, the boat comes in and you see my reaction and it is very real. <laughs> it's very much like, that's freaking Kelly Wentworth. And anyone who says that they would not react like that when they saw Kelly Wentworth is a liar. <laughs> that girl is awesome. Well, and and my m your first confessional is I love Kelly Wentworth and Joe is my all-time survivor crush. Oh, he is. He is. Who is who cannot say that Joe is their survivor crush? Again, if you no say he's not, you're lying. Yeah. No, but that's what that's what I'm saying. And I, you had like the most natural reaction to all of it. Whereas like there's other people who are probably like, oh God, how is this going to ruin my game? Or how is this going to affect my game? You're just like, I mean, you're right on the edge there of the boat, like screaming it out for everybody on comments, I, I think letting they, them know. I really think they put me there on purpose because if you watch, the, if you watch it back, I've watched that scene a couple of times. I'm like, Kelly, Kelly, come to <laughs> Kelly. It's so bad. <laughs> yeah. So me and Paul had a, had a real... I guess we just vibed really well, even once we got back to camp. I mean, you see the scene where I'm like, I played college soccer. Boom. Um, but Did you? I soccer. I'm like, oh my God, you're so cool. <laughs> oh my God. We, well, we, as you know, we were talking about talking to Kelly about that the other night, like how you guys Im immediately bonded. And she you was really like, did. oh God, she said soccer. I'm going to immediately jump on that. I know. It I seemed know. super natural, like really, really quickly. Yeah, it really was. I know that it looks like, oh, Lauren was this fangirl, and I totally am. Like, I still am a total fangirl. But Kelly's just the type of person that you want to be around. You know, she's very easy to talk to. She makes you feel very important and, like, special and loved. She's kind of like this light, right? And when she's shining on you, you feel really important. <laughs> um, and that's just kind of how our relationship was. Like, she was just someone I looked up to, but she also felt like my friend and my sister and my mom at times. I mean, the amount of times I cried on her shoulder at Lesu. It, I can't even count, but he's just a great person. Uh, like you don't even see it in the game, how great of a person she is. And that just came across to me really well. And we just vibed and I trusted her probably more than I should have. <laughs> like right off the bat, I was like, Oh, I trust you. We're great. I've known her for two seconds. <laughs> do you, do you, do you, did you actually write out the sign that says I don't cry except for no, what, what was it? Know, but I can right now. <laughs> yeah. Give me five well, minutes. Except for I miss my parents. Okay, bye or something. Like that. I never cry, but I've cried for four days straight now. I just really miss my parents. That 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 was better than the sign. We don't need the sign. That was better. That, that, that was way better than the sign. That was amazing. I mean, not to get too far ahead of ourselves, but your 
young coming in. Had you graduated Baylor when yeah. you were going out there? You Not had just either. graduated. I literally graduated seven days before I got out here. Remember that was in my preseason video as well. There you go. All I could remember is that you played soccer. That's all I could <laughs> I remember. Didn't remember you. Um, <laughs> yeah, I had. But was this way harder? And we're going to get into like you starving. But was this way harder than you thought it was going to be? And that's the first eye roll of the podcast too. Anybody who's just listening, right, that was the first one. Everybody, take a shot every time, Lauren. <laughs> 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 No, I'm <laughs> but yeah, I think I, so the way it happened is I sent in my video the second, maybe third week of March. Right. And then two days later, I got an email with like the questionnaire and oh, then wow. two days later I got a call and was on the phone for about two to three hours. And then a week later I was flying out to LA. And this was, so this was April. Then I didn't hear anything back. And I heard, I think it was the last week of April that I heard back that I was going to be on the show. And I graduated the second week of May. So I was moving out of my house in Waco. I was graduating. I was figuring out where I was going to live because I was going to Georgetown the next fall. And I was trying to prepare for Survivor all at once. Um, <laughs> so it was a really crazy transition. And I don't think I was personally ready for how hard it was. Like I was just so, um, I guess I had a lot of other things going on and mm -hmm. I was like, Oh, this is so fun. Like, this is great. And when I got out there for anybody watching that thinks that survivor is not real survivor <laughs> is so real. I cannot even explain it to you. I remember the first night, Gosh, I hope Kelly's watching is knows exactly where I'm going with this story. She's right in now. the chat. She, she's yeah. in the chat. She said, quote, we are embarrassing. Earlier. <laughs> <I know. laughs> First night, we our tribe is a mess. Obviously, we're Manu and we don't build our shelter and we decide that we're going to go sleep in the sand. Right. Which I don't know why we thought we would go sleep in the sand right by the ocean where the wind is coming in. Like, what were, what were we thinking? But well, whatever. That's what we're going to do. Freezing. <laughs> so 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 cold could didn't sleep all night this was the first night i'm thinking like this is gonna be fun like i see it on tv no we get up and i we're walking back to camp the sun has just come up and i'm like a 12 o'clock riser so the sun <laughs> coming up everybody awake was doing for me as well and i turned to kelly and i don't know why she didn't just slap me across the face but i go does it get harder <laughs> oh my god <laughs> she says the morning one and that liar goes <laughs> oh, no. okay, good. We're good. Liar. Says, Liar. Yeah, fast forward to you passed out on the ground. <laughs> okay. Fast forward to Lesu. Literally just fast forward seven days. I, I oh think like that was your story early on. It was literally, <laughs> I'm so happy Kelly Wentworth is here. I love yeah. Kelly Wentworth. And it was, I'm starving and I can't eat the rice. Yeah, I think that was, here's the thing I have with like editing and what you don't see. It's like, I didn't win. So it's not my story. You know, mm -hmm. the story of Survivor is how did this person win? And so whether or not I was having a conversation with Keith before he was voted out or I was having a conversation with Reem or all the things that I was doing isn't necessarily as important as I think some people maybe think it is because I didn't win. If I had won, they would have shown my relationship with everyone. You know what, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So. Yes, I was doing a lot more than just fangirling over Kelly and not dying as a corpse over there on the <laughs> um, But they showed the big moments, I would say. I mean, I, I actually found my idol on day two. Um, so I had it going oh. into the first tribal. Yeah, um, but they showed it in the second episode, which is fine because it wasn't, you didn't need to show the fact that I found the idol on day two because uh -huh. I wasn't going home. I wasn't going to play it. And it wasn't that big of a deal, you know? And there, there was a lot of problem with that first episode just being an hour because you're trying to cram yeah, so, so much short. in. So much. You have yeah. to get Edge of Extinction. We have four returning players. Yeah. We have Ron Clark find an advantage and it's just like, I found this. Right, right. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. you have, yeah. you have yeah. to do that because in the future, he gives it to Rick. Mm -hmm. And people, yeah. people don't really get that until he does give it to Rick. They're like, why are they showing this? Why are they showing this? Um, but I was personally thankful for the fact that my idol find was an episode two because they just threw me a softball and I could just hit it out of the park because they're like, women don't find idols, women don't find idols, women mm -hmm. don't find idols. And then I'm like, oh, here's one, you know. Yeah, like, look at this thing I found. Yeah. So, so you find you find that on day two. I know I've like I know you just said um 
Like I, I bet if that episode is 90 minutes, we probably would have seen you find that early on. Yeah. But so you find that day too. And I, I think this is something that Phil and I, or maybe just me, um, talked about. And I know I'm sure a lot of people post about this, but then you bury it, bury it. in yeah. the sand. Like tell us oh about finding it. Like tell us about the, the entire finding it. Because finding yeah. that thing too is a huge, like that's awesome. I get, I got so much crap online for, for burying it near the ocean. <laughs> and I'm like in my head thinking, y'all, what part of me thinks, yes, you, from you. I'm pointing at Alexa, no, not I, me. I, I'll own that. Phil, you told them said that too. That was my winner pick. I was stoked. You, you may as well that. have just chucked it in the ocean. <laughs> Everyone was like, what happens if it washes away? And I'm like, you guys, I'm not even close to the ocean. Like the reason the sand is wet is because it was pouring rain. Like, the ocean wasn't even in the camera no, shot. No, it wasn't even close to where we were. I mean, I'm talking like, I'd say 80 to 100 yards away, like not even close. I'm behind a rock. Like <laughs> this is not getting washed away by the ocean, people. It's not happening. And also I did, I had to go. So like we were, I don't remember what we were doing, but something was happening. And so I had to dig, I had to find somewhere that I could put it that was really quick and I didn't have to dig super deep. And so it looked like the sand was wet. So I was like, okay, I'll go there, dig it on, dig on wet sand and then just pat it down because it won't look like someone has dug up dirt. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so yeah. I leave and then later on in the day, I go back and I get it. And then I dig a super deep hole under a tree and put it there. So for everyone that was wondering if I put it in the ocean, I did it. <laughs> You heard it here first, people. That's that's good to clear up, though. I'm sure I'm sure that that yeah. was fun. Like what? Like because for the whole season, you can't really say anything, and no. you're just sitting yeah. there reading these yeah. things. Like, yeah. yes, Lauren, you're an idiot, and it's like, no, I'm not. Yeah, I'm, I'm really not. The amount of people that said, "Oh my gosh, girl, that's gonna wash away," or I remember even Sandra Diaz posted, "I hope her idol like floats away." <laughs> oh <laughs> really? my! It's all the way to the mountains. Wow, the queen of Survivor hopes you lose your idol. That's. That's tough. I mean, that's kind of flattering, right? That actually is pretty flattering. <laughs> I know, I'm like, you're tweeting about me? Okay. Yeah. Okay. What do you mean? I don't care. <laughs> well, well, now that we now that we know you found it on day two, I, I don't think either of us had realized that. Were you like, did you hit the ground running being like, I got to find an idol? Or was everyone just kind of looking for them early? How did that kind of, oh, this is a good story already. Um, yeah. So I wish, like, I genuinely wish I could tell you, yes, I'm going to go find an idol. I'm going to do this. That is so not what happened. Um, I was like, okay, so the tribe was already kind of antsy about the the returners, right? So Kelly and David are there and everyone's worried about them going to find idols. So everyone was staying in camp all the time. Like no one was leaving. And I remember even Reem at one point was like, I'm going to the ocean. I'm not leaving. I'm not searching <laughs> for an idol. Like people were telling you I'm not searching for an idol. So wow. I, remember, I was coming back from the bathroom and nobody really follows you to the bathroom, right? Cause that'd be creepy. And I'm, I'm like, you know what? This is the one time I have that no one's really around me. I'll just kind of look. And I remember looking and seeing blue and I'm like, oh my God, an extra sock. That is awesome. <laughs> like, yes. yes, I need an extra sock. Right? I was so excited. And I walk over there and I pull it out and I'm like, Oh my God, this is not a sock. Not a sock. <laughs> and then you see the whole like happy dance and like super excited about it. Um, I wish they showed that. I'm oh happy for you, God. Lauren, that they didn't show that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You got that was like a great moment. Like that that was yeah. an awesome scene. It so was I guess it's good that the sock wasn't there. I know. I know it was really exciting. And I was just, yeah, that whole day I was kind of on cloud nine. I was like, oh my gosh, like I really have an idol. Mm -hmm. what, what is this? You know, because you think about, you've watched forever, I have, and you're like, oh man, idols are so hard to find. There's no way I'll ever find one. And I even said this in my confessional. I was like, the odds of you finding it are just so slim. And to be able to just find one in general was so much fun. Whether or not I played it correctly is <laughs> no one void. And we'll get to, we'll we'll get get to that. I mean, so whether or not right is now. putting it nicely. Okay. <laughs> Okay, it's a new to find. This is very exciting. Yeah, it was very exciting. And I also, like, I know I said it too. I was like, and I want to try with Kelly Wentworth and David, and neither of them have it. <laughs> Hell yeah. 
There you go. <laughs> Instantly throwing under the bus. Speaking of Kelly, she said she's going to eat, but she loves you. She'll see you soon. Oh, love you. See you soon, babe. Yeah, I just had I, I I can't deny Kelly when she says, like, make sure you tell her that. You know? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, I'll tell her. I don't want to be that. So, so okay. We didn't even we haven't even talked about David yet, okay? Because yeah. I want I wanna I wanna see your reaction. Obviously, you're very excited to see Kelly. Yeah. You love Joe. I mean, obviously, like I met Joe and yeah, he's it's Joe. I know it's the hair and it's the everything. It's it's crazy. It's insane how like even though I talked about him, I've talked about him every season he's played because we started right at the end yeah. of twenty nine. So into his, still I'm like, damn, like that's Joe. Yeah. Okay, he really, like damn, I mean, he's st- he is just as amazing in person as he is on screen and even more. Um, yeah. He yeah, he's great. I love him and I really. I didn't have a ton of time with him, you know. I I would have loved to work with him. I would have loved to have more time with him. I just didn't. So I really only knew him for what three days, two days, something like that. Um, yeah, because you didn't even get to go to Edge with him. No. Yeah. yeah. So so then you pretty much get his twin brother in David <laughs> instead. Exactly. And so the same. Yeah, the same. So what were you thinking? Because you have to know, like when they're coming up, it's like, well, Kelly and Joe. You pro- you've watched every season. I know you're probably yeah. like blacking out because it's Kelly and Joe. Yeah. But you have to know you're not going to be with both of them. Exactly. You can say this because Kelly's eating. Were you kind of hoping for Joe so you just had an easy run all the way to the merge? Or were you happy with Kelly and David? Like, what was your take on that, getting David and Kelly? Honestly, I was hoping for Kelly. Like, really, I was. I don't think it had fully hit me the capacity that Joe has to just win. I I didn't know. Like, I didn't. You don't feel it. You see it on TV. But you're also watching it every week. So it's like, oh, they go to tribal again. Okay, a whole nother week. And then they go to tribal again. But it's like, it's every day out there. It's so much more than what you see on TV. And I, did, I didn't know that going in. So mm-hmm. I obviously, I would have loved to be on a tribe with Joe. But Kelly was my you know number one draft pick all the way. <laughs> and obviously, her and David were kind of wearing the same colors. So I assumed we were getting David. And I had seen David's season. And I really liked David. I thought David was fun to be around. He was sweet. I didn't know him. Um, and he wasn't, he wasn't like my, I felt like Kelly was kind of more in my archetype or kind mm-hmm. of what I would vibe with well. And David just seemed like a really cool guy to be around. And I was happy to have him on the tribe. I don't know. I think I was just like, yeah, we're up survivor. Like both of you are great. Let's do <laughs> and yeah. So that, that was my first reaction to David. I was just like, yeah, like, let's do this. And I also felt like David was one of the people that was going to try and help you a lot. And he totally did. I mean, David and Kelly, the second we got to the beach, were like, let's do this. I remember listening to Kelly's podcast and her saying she didn't even know how to do yeah. bamboo fire. I'm like, <laughs> sitting there fuming because Kelly, we worked on that for so long. And she was like, yeah, it's going to happen. And knowing she didn't even know what she was doing is hilarious. <laughs> like, oh, no. But just like David's knowledge of the game and Kelly's knowledge of the game and how I felt like they were, I don't know, kind of selfless when I watched them play in a way. Like they just, I felt like David was the kind of person that was going to try and be helpful. He wasn't going to try and be, I don't know. I don't want to say schemey, but just, I don't know. I was excited to have him. So, so because when we look at comma and we haven't talked to anybody from comma yet on one of these tell alls, we're going to be soon, oh, but comma is like all about getting rid of Joe and Aubrey's fast. Yeah. Yeah, they were. It was surprising to me that Kelly's name was coming up more than David's name. And, mm-hmm. and do you think you could like explain why? Because like, to me, that's weird. If I'm playing out there, like I like David a lot, but I'm also like, I've seen how good this guy game is socially and strategically. Right. Why were why was everybody so much more worried about Kelly than David? She's counting. So, so. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm making sure I'm saying this correctly. Mm-hmm. So um, we had five guys and four girls, right? And mm-hmm. Kamala had five girls and four guys, if I'm saying that correctly, right? Yeah, yep, you're right. Yep. And so I think just organically, Kelly and I mashed, like, just vibed better. And uh, Reem and Wendy vibed really well. And so it kind of became like a girl versus girl type of situation. And, and, and it wasn't something we ever wanted. You know, that's not at all what we wanted. It's just the way that it organically came about. And so when we knew that we couldn't get the boys out because the boys were kind of together and there were five of them and there were four of us and Kelly and I were like, well, we want to be with the numbers. And so I think that the name kept coming up for Kelly because David because at the beginning it really was Kelly and I versus Reem and Wendy mm-hmm. in, it wasn't malicious at all, at least like not from my part at all. And 
it, it's just what happened. And so I think when you see it, it's like, okay, we Reem wants, wants Kelly out. Well then Kelly obviously wants Reem out. And so David's name isn't even coming up really. And mm -hmm. I also think that because there were more males on our tribe, um, David was able to integrate himself a little bit better. Uh, mm -hmm. Whereas Kelly, I mean, at the beginning, Kelly and I were so close. You see that right away. But people also thought that we were in a power trio with Chris, which mm -hmm. is just hilarious to me. Um, because I never talked strategy with Chris once, not once before we put him out on day eight, which if anyone was wondering was a year ago today, happy vote out day, winner of Survivor 38. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Oh, there you go. Name. June what 6th. A fact. I love it. <laughs> I'm kidding. Chris knows I love him. Um, but yeah, we, I never talked strategy with him. I think that he was a little bit like starstruck by Kelly as well. And so people just kind of put us three together, which was is dangerous in itself. Like you don't ever want to have a power trio unless you know you're the less you three and self-implode. <laughs> yeah, so that's what happens with power trios. <laughs> <laughs> and so that I think that's why Kelly's name just kept coming up. It's like she was never, she was always a bigger threat people felt than David because Kelly is a big personality. Like she is a very powerful female. And because there were more males than females, she was an easier out than David. And I can't speak to everyone's feelings. That's just kind of the vibe I got because I was never gunning for Kelly, you know? That's mm -hmm. just the vibe I got from everybody. So, sorry, on. sorry. Um, so the, we're kind of like leading that way anyways, but early on, you and Kelly were super tight. It sounded like it was kind of the, the five guys and then the two sets of girls. Who was your next like plan to look for? Did, did War Dog just kind of naturally happen? Like what? What yeah. was kind of the next steps for kind of forming yeah. that larger group? Yeah, what's so funny is what you don't see at all is Rick and I were very close at the beginning of the game. Like, mm. I mean, maybe that was just one-sided, I don't know. But we would go to each other because he knew he had David and I knew I had Kelly. Mm. And so we assumed that's four. Like that's four and we're never gonna be the first targets. And so Rick and I had this very um, weird working relationship where he would kind of come and tell me what David was saying. I would tell him what Kelly was saying and just try to work together. Both of us knowing in the back of our heads that we probably can't sit with them at the end. And this was very early on, mm -hmm. um, but that we wanted to work with them. So Rick and I did have a very good relationship. And then I think War Dog will know this better than I will, but I think it was day five that War Dog comes to me um, and Wardog and I, again, had never talked strategy, had never really talked anything. And he pulls me aside and he's like, you are my ride or die. You are my number one. We are together till the end, like you and me. And I really liked Wardog. Like I liked the, I just, again, he was one of those people that I just naturally was worked well with. And so I was like, heck yeah, like, let's do it. I have two huge personalities in front of me. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to be the one they target. And that was something that I didn't think about going into the game. Like that wasn't the way I was trying to play. I think a lot of people ask you, well, what's your plan? What was your plan going in and how did it change? And I don't think I really had a plan because I'm one of those people that just has always had to adapt to the situation they're in. And the situation I was in was that two huge personalities and huge threats wanted to work with me. So no matter what happens, if we go into a tribal council, I'm not gonna be the one that's blindsided. It's gonna be one of them. And so allowing them to be these shields for me, knowing that as long as I have them here, I'm not gonna be voted out, but it gives me the ability to make relationships with other people so that when I, when I don't actually need them, I have the numbers to vote them out, which is what you kind of saw with the war dog vote. I think yeah, it's well, I, Yeah, I mean, <laughs> the, prob the problem is, that strategy is so hard to show oh, on TV. Yeah. On TV. And then that's why people are always like, Lauren's doing nothing. And it's yeah. like, it's like, well, really, she's she's like, you made it to fifth, and that's including after both Edge of Extinction things happened. And like Kelly and Wardog, what were they, ninth and tenth was yeah. the official final yeah. for them? I mean, the biggest example of that is that we go into the the tribal that Kelly gets voted out. It's like, yes, I was completely blindsided by that. Like, I'm not yeah. like absolutely completely blindsided. And the reason I was okay was because Kelly was in front of me. It's like, mm -hmm. that is exactly what I was planning for the entire game. It's like, if I go into a tribal and I think I know what's gonna happen and what I think is gonna happen doesn't happen, it's not going to be me, mm -hmm. it's going to be Kelly. Yeah. And also, if Kelly plays her idol, I have mine. 
So I think I felt a really good sense of security knowing that people are going to be gunning for Kelly and War Dog before they're going to be gunning for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's really smart. And then um, you said something interesting before though, where you were like, me and Rick would never be the targets. And I actually thought that final five of Lesu when you guys were just the last two tribe, I thought it was interesting that the two of you were the targets. Yeah. To me, it's like, isn't that the perfect time to get rid of David or Kelly before they're yeah. able to actually hit the merge? Was Rick seen as a big threat at that point by you guys more so than David? Or did you just feel like, like Rick's going to just jump ship as soon as he gets there? Um, I think that from my end, David and I had kind of developed a better relationship while we were on Lesu. Um, I don't know why really I can't I can't pinpoint it but I also knew that Rick is very likable like people see him on screen and they instantly like him um and I that made me nervous it made me nervous that he is the kind of person that wants people to like him and be involved with him you know he's gonna go to these people and he's gonna say hey I don't know you but let's be friends and it was this level of loyalty that I didn't know that he had to us. And being on Lesu had just ingrained this level of loyalty I felt like at the time between Kelly, War Dog, me, David. Um, and I didn't know that Rick would play that out with us. I wasn't sure. And at that point, I was like, I'm not voting for Kelly and I'm not voting for War Dog. And you don't see this, but War Dog and I were very close before this vote. Um, mm -hmm. And we go and we sit down and um he says you know i'm oh i love war dog <laughs> oh no <laughs> oh no what does he say <laughs> <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> he says okay so pretty much every vote since the beginning has been um me i've done every vote so when we <laughs> sit at the end together you're gonna need something to put on your resume so i'll let you choose who goes home Oh my god! I think he told us that in his three and a half hour epic, and we might have missed it. But I'm yeah, glad that I'm glad that you're reiterating it yeah. to just be. So, how did so you when, take that? Yeah, that's that's the only. How did you? Yeah. How do you react to that? I, I think the number one thing you can't do in Survivor, and I think was something that, um, I maybe lacked towards the end was play prideful, not just emotional, like obviously emotions play a huge role in the game. Um, but it's, pr it's pride that I think really kills you in the end. So I was totally fine letting war dog tell me what he thought, because the thing is the stupider war dog thought I was the better situation I was in, because if war dog thinks I'm an idiot and war dog thinks I'm just like, yes, war dog, whatever you say, war dog, <laughs> then he's going to take me to the end. And that was fine for me for the time being, because if the person that you're with thinks they can beat you, they're not going to vote you out. Mm -hmm. And so I think that him talking to me was just, it honestly just solidified in my mind, he really doesn't think I'm that smart, which is fine. I don't need him to think I'm that smart because at the end, if I have other alliances, I can vote him out. Exactly. Um, and so that was kind of my way of dealing with Wardog. We do, we get into it a lot over challenges and stuff. <laughs> so when it came to that, it's like he said, who do you want to vote out? And I, I think you see it on screen. I say, I, I think that Rick is the one that is most likely going to jump ship. Um, I don't know. And we don't really have any good options because at that time I was genuinely so sad. <laughs> like so sad we had become this family. It really did feel like everyone was against us. I mean, you see it in the challenge where we make the, we get the buoy out, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kama is yelling to new Manu like the way to make the puzzle and anytime we had a challenge with all three of us Kama was cheering for Manu like mm -hmm. it just it was so depleting and it was so sad to lose someone that you really felt like you were close with because we had voted together for so long mm -hmm. yeah and and what's interesting about what you're saying there is that by Wardog thinking that you're not that smart on a depleting tribe now you're down to four people, you know, I mean, it was just like never ending. You don't know how long you're going to lose. Yeah. You're push. you're putting yourself in a position where it's like, okay, well, if war dog is always the swing, I'm, you were essentially turning into the swing for Kelly and war dog. Yeah. Cause David yeah. goes home. If you guys lose that buoy challenge. Right. Yes. I mean, I, I assume so. I can't speak for Kelly and war dog. I think they've both said that David goes home, mm -hmm. um, but I'm not sure. Um, I didn't know that war dog was pitching my name to Kelly. I think it was after the Rick vote that he starts pitching my name to mm -hmm. Kelly, um, mm -hmm. which, 
I think is comes from the fact that we just got into it a lot over challenges. Like I'm a very strong personality when it comes to athletic competitions. Like I totally am. Sh I mean, I said, damn it. War dog more times than I can. Count. <laughs> it was, it was amazing. <laughs> You getting dropped on the one where David was like too scared to reach for it, and then you do it, and then he just oh drops you like yeah. on your face. Yeah. But I mean, here's the thing: we have talked about this so many times. You know how weird I is. Um, and he's like, "I didn't know what to do. I didn't know Kelly should have been up there." And I'm like, "Yeah, Kelly probably weighs like 40 pounds less than me." Mm -hmm. But at that point, I was just so like, "I want to win. I want to win." Ward, I'm put me on your freaking shoulders, you know? <laughs> and he does it, and he didn't drop me on purpose. But I'm so competitive, and I was so sick of losing that it just came out. And I mean, that is totally on me, honestly, just being emotional during no, the that's a great quote. Never apologize for that. <laughs> yeah. That was a fantastic quote. And <laughs> I, I, yeah, that was, that was a good time. But uh, I don't think anybody blames you though. Cause it's like, okay. That's so natural. I'm, I'm going to say this as many times as I can this podcast. <laughs> so you're a D1 athlete and then. Not, no, it's the yeah, rolling the eyes. God. Well, she's she's rolled her eyes a couple times. For anybody who's listening, oh, I think we're I up to four. That. I have yeah, the four on I can oh, How long have we been going? It's only been four. We are 36 drunk. minutes. Wow, one per nine minutes. You gotta you gotta oh, pick this up. Oh my god. But <laughs> so you're a D1 athlete. Wardog's got sports team tattoos on his arms. Also, <laughs> he's got sports team you're tattoos on him. <laughs> yeah. You, like you have Chris Underwood, who's like a pretty big dude. And you guys can't win anything. Can't win I mean, anything. nothing. And and so, like, what was it like for you? I mean, you had an idol literally every travel council you went to, so you're probably not super scared. Yeah. But what's it like to go out there the first time you're playing Survivor and just be on the train wreck tribe? Um, it was just, like, obviously frustrating doesn't really cover it because it's not so much that you're losing. And I think people, I mean, I know people gave Kelly a hard time and, like, even me a hard time for crying. It's not just that you're losing. It's that when you lose, you then go to tribal council, which is just an entire event in itself. It takes up your entire night. You're emotionally, you're physically, you're mentally exhausted. You get back to camp and then maybe you have a challenge the next day. And you have this looming feeling of, okay, well, we just lost. Like, are we going to lose again? And it just it just adds on to each other over and over again. And then you're hungry because you're not winning anything. You're mm -hmm. tired because you're going to tribal council. Then you're losing again. And then it just, it's this wheel. It's the circle that just keeps spinning and you don't know how to stop it. And I think it got to the point where it was like, I, I know that this was an argument that, uh, that War Dog and I had. I was like, we just need to think we're gonna win. Just think we're gonna <laughs> win. And War Dog was like, we're probably gonna get second. And I was like, no, we're gonna get first. We are going to <laughs> Joe. You know, like me just trying to grasp onto something that would give us some sort of positivity, I guess. And it's like, no, we weren't ever gonna beat Joe. It was <laughs> never gonna happen. So I get it. I get why. Like, War Dog is a is a realist, right? He is very much like Lauren. Don't be an idiot. We're not going to beat Joe. We're probably going to get second if we do. And of course, this argument happens right before the challenge where he says that only first place doesn't have to go to travel. Yeah, yeah of, course. Like, of course. Of <laughs> course. I mean, it, it is though. It's like at least if you're thinking you're going to win, if you fail, you can still get second. If you think you're going to yeah. get second and you fail, then that's exactly. Fair. Well, that was my point. It was like I just kept. I honestly, I don't know. I'm sure my tribes got so sick of me. I'd wake up and if we got tri tree mail, I'd run around. I'd be like, game day, game day, everybody game day. Like, even though I'm dying over there as a corpse, like that's the thing about Survivor for me personally is it's addictive. It's this competitive game that you cannot simulate any other way. And I just wanted to play. Like I wanted to win something. And so even though I was genuinely over there starving, I was so excited to play these these challenges and then we would lose and it was like <laughs> oh my god we just suck we're so bad and it just it never got better yeah it it really didn't but do you do you, do you regret running around like a crazy person as you're like oh my god i can't eat food so now i literally have no energy <laughs> at all like do you, do you think it would have been smarter to sit down and like clap? running around like a crazy person um was diminished on lesu for sure but i always was like okay game day guys like let's go let's go let's play like clear it oh god my my strength trainer is going to be listening to this from baylor and be like really you're using baylor terms but oh, god. like 
new new day, move on. And that's that's hard to do when you are tired and mm -hmm. hungry and sleeping on dirt, like genuinely sleeping on the mud. We haven't even talked about Lesu and how crappy that beach was, but I mean, I, I have one picture of it and it is, we didn't even build a shelter, you guys. We were so tired. We get to Lesu and we're like, we can't, we can't. I mean, that was the, that was the day that you see me kind of like throw up and I'm like crying and I'm like, I miss my parents and this is so sad. And it really was, it was like, I was very sick at that point and couldn't eat anything. And we look around this camp that was just mud. I mean, it really was mud. And we're like, we can't, we're not building a shelter. We don't have the energy. Mm. So we literally put up some palm fronds to try and block the wind, try being the operative word. <laughs> and um, we slept in the mud. And wow. yeah, it was awful. It was awful, awful, awful. And the wind would come in and it would just sweep right through us. And it was freezing. And like, thank God for Kelly and David keeping that fire going. Like they really were the mom and dad of Lesu. Like, I, we, I, I don't know. It was awful. It was so, so bad. And I think about watching these clips from Kama where it's like, they obviously are winning because they're eating and they're sleeping on an actual, yeah, they're sleeping on bamboo. And I'm not saying that the bamboo was comfortable, but it's a whole heck of a lot better to have some sort of shelter than sleep on the mud and mm -hmm. literally be terrified that it's going to rain. I mean, mm -hmm. I remember one day it was, it was some night on Lesu. And first of all, I had like no clothes as it is. I'm wearing like some sort of random sweater. I have a crop top and I have like joggers, right? So I'm freezing all the time. And we're laying there and I feel a couple like drips of water, right? Mm -hmm. And I just remember my stomach going into Ugh. knots, just pure knots thinking, I, I, can't, I can't do this again. Like it cannot rain because my clothes won't get dry. We, our fire will go out. Nobody will be able to eat. We'll just be living in the mud again. Like it was some dark days over there on Lesu. It really was. <laughs> that yeah. doesn't sound like fun. Like I, I would love to play Survivor. It doesn't sound like fun. So I mean, yeah. I feel like you're trying to do better than Lesu. Like you really can't do worse. So <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, there's probably only from that original Manu tribe, there's not many tribes who have done worse in Survivor history. Yeah, I know you're a huge so Survivor true. fan. You've yeah, watched every season, course. right? Like you're yeah. Yeah. There's not many. I mean, Oolong yeah, that's jumps to mind, but yes, that's an easy saying. one. Yeah. I really don't think you can get much worse than us. Um, but I don't know. Again, it's one of those things that I think back, it's like it really has bonded, you know, especially Kelly and Wardog and me together. It's like we went through this really horrible experience and no one can – no one will ever understand it and no one can take it away from us. And I think that that's one of the things that makes Survivor so special is like, yeah, it was awful, but you're also doing this willingly because you love it, you know? So I complain, but it also is one of those things where it's like, I'm never going to quit. I'm never going to quit. No. I want to be here, but man, it was, it was really bad. <laughs> well, I mean, so were you, I'll, one more thing about the pre-merge, I guess. Okay. Um, Wait, I'm trying to think how I want to phrase it. Okay, forget it. I'll figure it out how to phrase it later. Okay, let's okay. go. Let's go to one edge of ext or unless Alexa, you have something. Your I, I just wanted to talk about the. I don't know if we're calling it a double tribal, whatever that was. Oh, yeah. Um, the because we heard Kelly's perspective on mm -hmm. Kelly finding the idol behind yeah. Wardog's head. Hear yeah. Wardog's perspective on that. It sounds like you and Kelly had like a nonverbal conversation about that, and yeah. then that like you guys ended up going to tribal council right after. Can you right. talk about that a little bit, and then yeah. the tribal council? Yeah. So we go to the challenge, right? This is the challenge where I said, you know, let's try and get first, you guys, and not get second. <laughs> and obviously, only first place can go. And we don't even—I don't even know if we started the puzzle, but um, <laughs> tells us it's going to be joint. And I know for a fact we did not know that before the challenge because I remember thinking. As bad as it sounds, I remember thinking, okay, well, odds of us getting first are slim. So <laughs> at least it won't be me. It'll probably be David. Mm -hmm. And they said it was a joint. And all of a sudden, it was like this group mentality of like, I felt this. And I cannot attest to how War Dog or Kelly or David felt. But I was like, we have to keep, we have to stay together. We have to stay together. Mm -hmm. so I remember we walk into camp and I, we all sit down and I say, they're going to vote for me. Mm -hmm. And everyone was like, you think so? I was like, yeah. I mean, that's what I would do. I'm not going to vote for David because he might have an idol. I'm not going to vote for Kelly because he might, she might have an idol. 
I don't know why I didn't think they were going to vote for War Dog. I don't really remember, but I just remember thinking they probably think that Kelly and I are tight and they want to split up a duo mm -hmm. uh, because I'm sure that Wendy has told them that. So if we go to tribal, they're going to vote for me. And everyone's like, yeah, yeah. And then <laughs> my favorite part. Yeah, is, sex for you. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> and they go, everyone sits down and they're like, okay, well, look, if anybody has an idol, like, just tell us, just tell us you have an idol. We can work together to use it um, because we don't know what they're going to do. And I remember thinking, I'm like, y'all are crazy if you think I'm about to tell you right now <laughs> or that I have an idol. Like, no. And I go, yeah, guys, honestly, if someone has an idol, like, just play it for yourself tonight. That's the best choice. Just do it. I'm all in my head thinking, I'm not playing my idol tonight. Are you kidding me? And, and you can't announce it because if you announce it, then one of them can just be like, screw that. Let's vote Lauren out. She has an yeah. idol. Merge exactly. is coming. <laughs> exactly. So I was not telling them that. And they were, everyone was like, well, we need to find an idol. We need to find an idol. And before this happens, War Dog comes up with his idea to vote Wendy, um, which, I mean, all the credit to him. I thought that was a great, a great idea. Um, he says, let's just all vote Wendy. There's no way that the, you know, the three of them go to rocks for Wendy. There's just no, there's no chance. Um, and then you have my quote where I say, I don't go to rocks for War Dog. I was about to say, one of, one of your like top five quotes. That's <laughs> such a good one. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I, I mean, back then, I, I guess I wouldn't have, I don't know. I don't really remember my feelings on that situation because really what sticks out in my mind is the actual tribal and being so scared that I got four votes. Um, but yeah, I don't know that I would have gone to rocks for war dog. Maybe I'd like to say I would have, um, at least I pretended like I would have at tribal. Um, but yeah, so we, we, we come up with this plan, but then everyone says, you know, we really should go look for the idol. And I'm thinking, yeah, we really should go look for the idol. I've been looking since we got on that beach as with as much energy as I could muster, you know, and I know what it looks like. I know mm. that it's probably going to be in a green little like tied up canvas because Leslie was green and Mono was blue and mine was blue. Um, and so I'm looking everywhere. I'm looking in the vines because that's where I would hide it because it's green. And so everyone's looking and really, I guess, fast forward to when Kelly finds it is I'm sitting there. I'm, sta or I'm standing there with War Dog and Kelly, and we're chatting. And War Dog looks away for a second, and Kelly goes, "Take the camp." <laughs> and I'm like, "Okay, War Dog. Hey, we should probably go check over on the other side. I haven't checked there yet, and I've checked all around here." And he's like, "Yeah, yeah, you're right." And <laughs> walk back to camp, and I'm thinking that girl better found that idol. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, we get back to camp, and then she says, "I got it." Um, which it was funny to hear her say that she wouldn't have told me if I hadn't have been there. Um, because I hadn't really thought of that before. I hadn't thought, okay, if I wasn't standing there when she found it and needed me to take War Dog away, would she have told me? Mm -hmm. Um, although I think if she hadn't told me, I wouldn't have told her. Right. So which maybe means maybe I can pinpoint the loss of my game to that moment. <laughs> Have you have you forgiven Kelly or is it just like you're never gonna forgive her for that? Oh my gosh, for what? For telling people I had an for, idol? Yeah, for well, I mean, like I can't forgive her because you would have won and it ruins my winner games. I don't when... know if I would have won. There's so many what ifs, but um, I think that I want to blame Kelly. That's okay. fine. You can blame Kelly. I never will. I love her too much. Mm. But I know I a lot of people have asked me this, and a lot of people gave her so much hate on Twitter yeah. and Instagram. And it was like, you guys, first of all, it's a game. Like I chose to play the idol for Chris. I made the decision. I own that. But even before that, it's like Kelly has played two other times and she's used to being voted out and going to Ponderosa where you can have a beer and you can share all this information. And it's like, nothing you say affects the game. She's just been blindsided by her biggest ally and she gets to this weird beach like, i don't know i was never there but i assume it was probably pretty hostile she gets there and people are asking her questions and she, i mean you saw me after i got voted out if you watch my ponderosa i'm like woo everywhere like <laughs> having to then go to the beach still be in the game and try to control your thoughts and it wasn't like she said hey guys i have an idol or sorry lauren has an idol she said oh my gosh i cannot believe i got voted out with an idol and then David, thinking she had the idol from Manu, says, oh, it's the Manu idol. And she says, no, Lauren has that one. Like, it, mm -hmm. wasn't, it wasn't malicious. It's like a conversation. Yeah, and even what's so funny is I knew that they knew I had an idol. 
I knew. You did? Yes, because of the way they reacted on the jury. Every time he said, if anyone has a hidden immunity idol, now would be the time to play it. They'd look Every at you. Every single human on that jury would look straight at me. Mm -hmm. Every single one. And I even remember them being like, is she going to play it? Is she going to play it? Like, I knew they knew. So oh, wow. it never even crossed my mind to be angry at her, which maybe it should have. I really don't know. But never once during the entire game and even after the game and the entire year it's been for it to be filmed, did I ever once think I cannot believe she told him because I've said it before and I will say it again with the information I had at the time, I would have played my idol for Chris, whether he knew I had an idol or not. Mm -hmm. So I don't blame Kelly for that whatsoever. And I don't think anyone else should because in the end it was my choice and it was my actions. So I didn't well, even consider the, drama. Right, well, yeah, well, that's what we're here for. I just wanted to cause drama, but um, I, I didn't even consider the fact that the jury would eyeball you. Like, I, I never even thought about that, but that, yes. like, that completely clues you in. So, yeah, I absolutely yeah. know because what you don't see, I mean, actually, I think you do see it kind of if you know what to look for in the episode. Chris never says, I know you have an idol. I say, I, and I don't remember exactly how the conversation went down, but I said, um, I know you have a lot of knowledge from over there on edge. And he uh, says, I sure do. And I said, I know, you know, and he says, I do. And I was like, and then I think it comes along the lines of him being like, Kelly says, you need to play your idol. Well, and again, when people say, I can't believe he lied. Like he totally tricked her. It's like, you guys, I knew this. I knew that I needed to play my idol. Well, I didn't need Kelly Wentworth to tell me this. Like I'm a fully functioning human <laughs> that knows okay, I've had an idol since day two. The jury knows I've had an idol since day two or whatever. And at this point in the game, I felt like there were two people that could beat me, um, Rick and Victoria. And in order for me to win, I needed to play my idol in a big way. Like I knew this. It wasn't Kelly that swayed me. It wasn't Chris that swayed me. It was fully my actions and my choices that were ultimately mm -hmm. my I have so many things to say. But how epic would it have been if you would have just played the idol for Victoria and Chris goes home? I mean, come on. You have on. no idea uh, how many times I have thought of that. You do you know no how many times idea. I've thought of that? I, thought, <laughs> I have thought about that multiple times, but it, it never once crossed my mind on the island because I did not think there was any way that my winner pick or my winner pick. Uh, Lauren, Lauren, we prepared some cards for you. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Uh, I, but, uh, we, uh, it, yeah, it's a bummer. Yeah, we are. We are getting ahead of ourselves, though. We're getting. We ahead. are. We yeah. are. Oh, I want to say the yeah. other thing I wanted to say about this is it reminds me of like a Troy Zan situation, and and we've had we did our tell all with Troy Zan, mm -hmm. um, back during Game Changers, and and it's one of those situations where like you can play an under the radar game with an idol the entire game and just never be targeted, and then you never have the ability to do anything that looks good. Right. Exactly. And I feel like that was happening to you, yeah. but I also feel like you had some really good moments. Um, you know, you and Julie at that reward after Kelly goes home it, with the mud. I don't know how you could sit there while War Dog and, and Rick. I mean, I would have been losing yeah. my mind. I mean, I don't know how you could have a normal conversation, but come on. Um, and then I think what was it? You caught Rick in who did you who did you yeah. catch in the lot? Did I catch right? Where you were like, you did oh. not get that idol from Yeah, because yeah, you were like, there there's two idols that were played and there's three people now with idols. You were the one who caught that. Yeah, well, there was that. Yeah, but he's. I think he's talking about the time where Rick says that he got his idol from Edge. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then, well, okay. So I'll, I'll address the Julie one first, and then we'll do that one. So Julie and I had this very, again, I like, I'm overusing the word organic, but it's the best way for me to use it. It's like, we just really formed a genuine friendship, and we were not on the same side. Like, at the time we formed our friendship, we were not on the same side. I just liked being around her and she, I guess, liked being around me. And we did really just talk about, you have so much downtime. We talked about our lives. Like we just talked. And I think that that's what formed a really strong relationship to go into that reward challenge. And I don't really remember the dates. I have, I don't have a mind like Warbog does, but that's we okay. into this reward challenge. And I was <laughs> so pumped to be able to talk to her because at this point, we, you know, he had just voted out Kelly. He had just destroyed our six person alliance, right? Am I getting the dates right? Yes, yes. Yeah, that's, yeah. that was yeah. the one, yeah. yeah. Okay, and we are sitting there and we talked for a really long time and they, they don't show it, but we said, you know, look, I'll go, I'll go to the end with you. I, I said this to her, I was like, I'll go to the end with you. I'd love to sit at the end with you. Um, and she said the same thing to me. And we kind of talked about, you know, 
who do we want to take out next? And that episode was super interesting because they show a conversation between, I believe, Julie and I, where we're debating on who to vote out, correct? And it's Mm -hmm. between, um, who do they edit it to look like? Me and, we're debating between Aurora and War Dog or Rick and War Dog? I think it was Aurora and War Dog, wasn't it? Right, so it was I think I could be making that up, but I yeah. think it was Aurora because because Aurora it. ends up getting votes that night. Yes, she does. So this is yeah. how that day kind of went down. Um, Julie and I talk at the reward challenge, and I say I want Rick out. I think that Rick is going to have a great story. I've been trying to get him out since the merge. Um, I think that he is dangerous, and I think that people are overlooking him and he's going to be dangerous as we get later into the game because we don't fully understand edge like viewers don't understand we didn't know what was going on i had no idea that these people Mm -hmm. were strategizing i had no idea that they were forming real relationships like Mm -hmm. i didn't know to me and especially since i never actually went to edge to me those people were out of the game they weren't playing And so I had no idea what was going on. The only thing I knew was that there's got to be more going on than I think there is. Also, Mm -hmm. he's getting advantages. Like, he's getting advantages Mm -hmm. from Edge. He's got to go. And everyone was really, like, swinging swinging for War Dog. People were really gunning for War Dog, which, again, I wanted to get War Dog out because of the Kelly thing. But I was trying not to be emotional about it because I knew, okay, War Dog is always going to be a common target. Oh, mm-hmm. I'll get into this when we talk about Rick, but Wardog was always going to be a common target. So if I can make sure that this common target stays in the game, but rally people to take out maybe the lesser target in everybody else's minds, that keeps the main target and takes out the person I want. So then yeah. the next vote, okay, we cycle back around to the main target. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that was my thinking in that situation. So when Julie and I talk afterwards, um, what you don't see is Wardog comes to me. <laughs> I think he's told you this story. Um, he comes to me at the well and he's obviously voted out Kelly. And we, we had talked after the tribal council where I went down to him and I was like, well played, like really great job. And he's like, yeah, you know, I couldn't clue you into it. And I said, yeah, of course not. Of course you couldn't clue me into it. And he tells me, obviously me, you and Rick need to stay strong. And I'm like, absolutely. We need to stay strong. A hundred percent us until the end, baby. Right. (laughs) Literally I get up from his office and I walk to Victoria and Aurora and I'm like, he's gone. He's got to (laughs) go. And they're like, "Uh, yeah, we're in absolutely like war dog's got to go. I go to Gavin and I'm, and at this point, Gavin and I had made a really great relationship. We had bonded really well i felt really close to gavin and i and gavin was kind of freaking out about oh my gosh we've just been blindsided what do i do and i was like we get numbers to vote out war dog like it's it's fine we're fine we're still alive we knew i knew this was going to happen i knew that at some point kelly was going to get blindsided or we were going to get blindsided i didn't think it would be this early but just we've made relationships with other people. It's not just me, Kelly and war dog. Like maybe you saw, I had relationships with Victoria. I had relationships with Aurora, with Gavin. And I was like, okay, like let's take out war dog. Right. So that was that plan. He comes to me at the well after, I guess after the immunity challenge. So he, so Rick had just won. Um, or maybe it was before Rick won. I'm not really sure. And he tells me, Oh, this is my favorite impersonation. (laughs) Getting character, getting character. (laughs) Getting character. (laughs) I don't think anyone can be board dog like board, board dog. <laughs> um, but he comes to me at the well and he's like, all right, look, here's the thing. You're never going to win. Um, the only way that you're going to win is if you're sitting with a bitter jury. And like, I've made all the moves in this game. I've orchestrated everything, but I will take you to the end because I'm your only chance. Nobody else wants to work with you. You have no other alliance. And you and I are probably the best bet to make it to the end together. And so... <laughs> Honestly, you're so right. Like, there's no way that I make it to the end without you. That's great, uh, though. That's so good. That yeah, was it. Was really good. It was my best acting. Um, <laughs> I was like, "You're right. I'm not gonna. There's no way for me to win. The only way to do it is to sit by you with a better jury. And honestly, I bet they like me more than you. And obviously, like, I I don't think that's true. I don't like. I was you need to get that you know, shot in now. I know, right? <laughs> I was like, you never know. And he's like, absolutely. Like, I've played a more strategic game, but maybe they're bitter and they vote for you. Like kind of out of pity or whatever. And I'm like, imagine, but like, he doesn't know you have the idol at that point. So you could have played an idol correctly. Like, that's the crazy thing to me. And like, I think like, 
we said when Wardog made that move on Kelly, it's a great move. Probably did it like a little too early, but you know you're gunning for a player who's played before, who has an idol, has all this. I think Wardog is really good at Survivor, and everybody oh, on Edge of Extinction, yeah. he's yeah, brilliant. like I think he's a really like he's top notch. But I almost think he outthinks himself sometimes and doesn't realize like this was at final eight. He's saying this to you. Yeah. You have an idol. People are coming back from Edge. Mm -hmm. Anybody can get voted out. I mean, Rick Devins could go next. An extra vote could come in. There's so much game to be played as we see when Chris literally plays the game for three days and wins. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, so, yeah. I mean, War Dog is brilliant. And I don't say this, like, I'm saying this to kind of make fun of him a little bit, you know, because it's all, it's all in fun. War Dog is so smart. Like, so mm -hmm. smart. Great at Survivor. I think he made the Kelly move too early, but I also understand, I understand his thinking. And I mean, I played my idol for Chris. I like, I hope people can understand my thinking. Like there's just, there's so many layers to the game that you just can't, you can't understand unless you're in it. And so, yeah, him saying that to me was kind of like, okay, that's going to be a no. <laughs> so I actually went to Gavin and Julie who were waiting to hear if we were going to vote for Aurora or not because War Dog, you know, I pitched to him. All right, well, let's vote for Aurora then because obviously we can get Julie behind that. We can get Gavin behind that, all these different things. And he says, yeah, let's vote for Aurora. That's a great idea. We've wanted that forever. So I go to Julie and Gavin because I guess War Dog had maybe spoken to them. I don't quite remember. And they're like, are we voting for Aurora? And I'm like, no, we are not voting for Aurora. Like we're, we're not doing that. And we all decide to vote out War Dog. And um, yeah, you kind of see what happens from there. It's what I think is so fascinating about everything that you're saying with this, like with you have like your shields here and like who's your like number one target and it was War Dog. What's crazy about this season is like you had Joey Amazing, who was always going to be a target. Then you have Kelly, who's always going to be a target. David, who's always going to be a target. Wardog, who's always going to be a target. Aurora, who had turned herself into a target. Yeah. So like by the time we got down to the final seven, it was kind of hard to see where everybody stood. Yeah. Or I guess it was final six. It was after Aurora gets voted out because like every target had been booted from the game. Yeah. And what you hadn't, you, you weren't really getting votes at that point anymore. Rick hadn't really been getting votes. Victoria hadn't had a vote. Gavin hadn't had a vote. Julie hadn't gotten votes. Like it's crazy yeah. how that's like your final six because there were so many, for lack of a better term, like meat shields, not calling them meat shields because, but like they were all just shields for yeah. everybody. Mm -hmm. No, absolutely. And I think that, one thing about like my game was that people don't remember that I went into the merge with two allies. Like mm -hmm. I had two people on my side versus pretty much <laughs> mine. Um, and I was able to integrate myself into comma really well. Like Gavin mm -hmm. and I became very close. Julie and I became close. Victoria and I had like a combative relationship just <laughs> Gavin was kind of at the center of it. But I always knew she was so smart and I wanted to work with her. And we had this like working relationship to the point of like, I think the word that comes to mind when I think of Victoria is like self-preservation. Mm -hmm. So good at that. She's so good at being on the right side of the numbers. And that's what, that's what Survivor is, right? And yeah. so we had a working relationship. Aurora and I had this weird like competitive relationship where it was like we both understood each other's drive. Like I had real relationships with these people, which allowed me to not get votes in the end because I made people want to work with me. Like I, I know this, this all sounds kind of like self-promoting, but it's like, I did go into the merge with only two people. And at the end of the game, I was in the majority. Like I, I feel like that's how the people at the end played their game and they weren't as showy like Victoria always kind of under the radar, but playing an incredibly smart game. Gavin friends with everyone, Julie friends with everyone. Just like, it became more of a social game, I'd say, um, towards the end, and maybe not so much, I don't want to say strategic, because the social game is strategic, but not so much, like, showy, like, yeah. Warthog and Joe and Chris, like, these, I guess if you want to call them meat shields, or these shields were taken out, and what you had left were the people that were able to integrate themselves successfully into relationships. And so... Like when you're looking at that final five, and I don't want you to speculate too much because I don't want Wardog to scream at you and say that oh, you're doing wow. revisionist history. Yeah. But when you look at that final five, let's say Chris doesn't actually come back in the game. Let's say like that, mm -hmm. that it had ended, Edge of Extinction had ended at final 13 when Rick comes in. And now it's just the five of you who are starting the finale are the five. Right. Rick probably wins in most scenarios, but who would have been like the second person, do Victoria. you think, in the jury's mind? Victoria. Oh, wait, oh who would have won, like, won or who we would have voted out? 
Who no? Who like would have won? Like what I'm saying is like because it was it's so weird because we only see Gavin get to the end and then sit down next to Chris. Yeah. But who were you looking at as somebody who you were worried would beat you and would get all the jury yeah, votes? I, I I wouldn't have beaten Victoria. There's no way. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. it was, and like I don't know because like Edge was over there just talking and talking and talking. Like they were over there just kind of sitting and. I don't want to say bitterness, but like kind of, they were over there just sitting there, just running things through their minds. And the vibe I got was that they really respected Victoria. Um, and mm -hmm. I knew that before Chris came into the game, it was like, it was very well known. I knew I could not sit at the end with Victoria. My goal final three was to sit with Gavin and Julie. And honestly, Chris as well, because I thought there's no way people vote for someone who played 12 days. <laughs> and I don't mean that in a mean way. I've told him yeah. that multiple times. Like I, that's genuinely what I was thinking. I was I didn't know what Edge was. I didn't know what these people were going through. I didn't know that they felt like they need, that they were playing the game. And I, I'm sure they, I don't want this to come across rude at all because it's just like, that's just not my experience. I didn't experience Edge. That's not my game. And so for me, I didn't understand it. So I'm going kind of backwards, but it, it applies to what you just said. When they first, that group first comes in, what are you thinking? And then as the as you go through the merge and people are getting advantages sent their way, and like you said, you never you never end up going there. Like, what is your experience with it as a viewer? Yeah, pretty much. Honestly, from yeah. I mean, the most I saw of it was on screen. Um, obviously, they come out, and I'm like, crap. Like, we voted out all of those people, all of them. Like, <laughs> yeah. kidding me? Um, I thought our best bet was probably Rick and Aubrey. Um, although mm -hmm. I did kind of sense maybe a little bit of animosity from Rick just because it was me and him, you know, was us pitted against each other. Um, but he went out in such a kind way that I just kind of assumed that it would be fine. Um, and then obviously, like you see the less of three jump up for joy when Rick comes back into the merge. Like we're so excited. The five are back together. Um, and then I didn't know that they were still going to have a chance to get back in. I thought I was done. Um, and so we get to tribal council that next, so the Joe vote and they bring in the jury. And even then I'm like, why are they wearing their clothes still? Like we didn't know what was going on. Like I didn't know they had another chance. Jeff didn't even explain it to us until the next tribal. Like we didn't know. And so all of a sudden we're like, okay, so these people are going to get another chance to come in. When, how many chances we didn't know. We didn't know where they were really living. We didn't know if they were living together. And anything Rick told me was, I just assumed it was a lie. Like I didn't know. Um, so my my overall consensus on Edge of Extinction is, what the heck is going on? Like, <laughs> I had no idea. No, no I idea, I never went. So honestly, I can't even attest to anything that went on there because it's all secondhand information. Even the mm -hmm. things I've heard from people, it's like, okay, Kelly's telling me this, Wardog's telling me this, Aubrey's telling me this. It's like. Yes, and I believe and trust those people, but it's secondhand information. I didn't experience it. So I don't feel like I have the right to even speak on it. Do you think that Manu is at a dis the, the members who are left from Manu are at a disadvantage because everybody there is Manu except for Aubrey? Like, do you think that you're at a disadvantage because pretty much whoever's coming back is going to be sl feel slighted by all of you? I, I felt like it depended on the person. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, like, if Reem came back, it wouldn't have been great for us. Um, if <laughs> Wendy came back, it wouldn't have been great for us. I felt like Chris was kind of neutral to me at that point. I didn't feel mm -hmm. like we had ever really blindsided him. Um, in I mean, I mean, we did, but I didn't do it maliciously. And I honestly wasn't a huge part of that. Chris and I were off killing the chicken together. There um, we go. We haven't really talked about the chickens much on, yeah, on we, any of yeah. these podcasts yet. Yeah. Chris and I were off killing the chicken together, just kind of chatting it up. And I go back up to camp and Wardog and Kelly were like, Chris is gunning for Kelly. We're voting for Chris. I was like, all in. And I go back and I kill the chicken, you know? So it wasn't, it, I didn't feel like that was a malicious relationship. Um, I thought Rick would have been fine. Yes, Manu was at a disadvantage to answer your question, but I it depended on who it was. With the chickens, so you finally win something, right? Like Lauren, you did it. You won something on Survivor. Honestly, you, you... Chris won that for us. Let's let's <laughs> Okay. Well, Lauren's finally on a winning team. 
<laughs> and so you get the chickens. And yeah. we find out that you end up eating a chicken even though there was the Wendy drama. I'm not even going to ask about the Wendy drama. Yeah. What I want to know is how pissed off are you when you find out like essentially the next day there's a tribe swap and you're not getting the chickens anymore. <sighs> And that you're ending up with pretty much the exact same tribe. But that tribe deserved to have, less you deserved to have the chickens because you all won them. We really did. We got the absolute shortest straw ever invented in the history of the world. It wasn't even a straw. <laughs> um, yeah, I would say I was, I wasn't, I know, I know I should say I'm pissed. I know I should, but I didn't process it. Like you, I wasn't processing, oh my gosh, we didn't get the chickens. I was thinking, Oh my gosh, my four best friends are together. Heck no, yeah, party! <laughs> that's really genuinely what I was thinking. And I know that's not really that smart. I know that that's not great survivor play. I know that that sounds super naive, but that's how I was feeling in the moment. I was like, my number one goal was to make sure that I was in the majority. And my second goal was to make sure that Kelly was on my tribe. Both of that them. That worked. Happened, right? Like, I didn't process, oh my gosh, we're going to have to cannibalize each other until we got to camp. And then it kind of hit. It was like, oh man, there is nowhere to hide. Because mm -hmm. that's how I was, like what I'm thinking is you're at that vote when Rick Devins goes home. This was before the internet was like, we hate Rick Devins. This yeah. was back when it was like, oh, he deserves a second chance. Yeah. How quickly that changed. Yeah. But when Rick Devins goes home there, it's like you're all playing Final Five Survivor. Yeah. And it's like yeah. emotional. Whereas Julie Rosenberg doesn't get a chance to go home until day 22. So yeah. yeah so, I mean, yeah, we played, we played survivor for the entirety that we were on that show. Like we wrote them. And do you think that that because comma wasn't there because the Ron Clarks and the Eric Halfmans and, um, you know, Aurora, they're not there to see this. Do yeah. you think that hurts you Absolutely. if you get to the end? Because Absolutely. it's just like, they didn't really get to see everything you had to do early on. Yes. Absolutely. Because they were, they played a different game than us for 17 days. Mm -hmm. And like, if anyone has seen the secret scene and I love Julie to death and I know that she's just <sighs> joking, but the secret scene of Julie being like, we've got this food and we've got cake mm -hmm. and we've got cookies and we've got coffee and we're all going to be happy and hungry. And this is more food than I eat at home. And I'm thinking like, what you're dust in the that wind. must have been very <laughs> very hard to watch it was it was it was a hard one but i was like it, it was funny it was humorous because obviously it was after this fact but it was like they really they, they never will understand how truly hard lesu was and how how like the emotional toll it takes on you to play 17 days of survivor because we truly were playing 17 days of survivor and the comma tribe that never went to tribal Yes, they were making relationships, but relationships are different when you have to decide who to vote out and then you have to decide how you're going to vote them out because it's mm -hmm. not just, oh, okay, I'm going to vote out Rick. It's going to be like, how am I going to vote him out? And yes, this was pre-merge. I get that. But it's like, how do you do it? How do you come to this conclusion? How do you vote him out? And I think that that's what Survivor is. And they didn't do that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why in a lot of seasons recently, especially the tribe that's dominated, the first person to go at the merge, it didn't happen in David versus Goliath, but in other seasons, the tribe that's dominating, if somebody's going to tribal for the first time, they go. Like Chris Noble goes, uh, Nick Mariano went back in 32. Um, and then in this season, it's Joe. I feel like when you haven't actually, you think you have an alliance with somebody. I mean, the way I look at it is like Ron and Julie having their breakdown after the Eric boot, you guys are already having to deal with that on like day yes. eight, yeah. you know, and they're having to deal with that now. And all of a sudden it's like, Oh my God. And it leads to a really epic tribal that poor Julia goes home at, but you know, they, they hadn't experienced a real blind side yet. Yeah. And I think also like you don't see it, but they were up on their high horse, man. Like <laughs> real up there. And I remember like this is the this is the thing that you don't see. It's like I right after the merge happens, right after the Joe vote, War Dog starts throwing me under the bus to everyone <laughs> he talks to. Everyone, Lauren should be the one to go. Lauren, Lauren, Lauren. So I'm like, all right, done. I'm gonna go talk to other people. So like I had conversations with, I mean, really everyone. Um, but one that sticks out to me is the conversation with Ron. And Ron tells me, I have a plan for you. But you're just going to have to wait. Just like sit down and just be quiet and wait. And I'll come to you 
when I'm ready. And I don't know if he was trying to be condescending. Like, I really don't. Um, I doubt he was trying to be rude. But I was like, you feel so powerful right now. <laughs> and it will be your downfall. Because mm -hmm. if there's one thing I've learned about Survivor is you need everyone. You need everyone. Yeah. And if you think you don't need me right now, you will in the future. And it was just kind of these conversations that I was having with everyone. Like I, any comma did not want to have a conversations with us ever. And that wasn't until the gap, like from my side, I had a conversation with Gavin and Gavin then integrated me with um, Victoria and Julia to get Eric out. But before that it was like, sit down and wait for your turn and we'll come get you when we need you. And I remember <laughs> my confessional and being like, who does he think he is? <laughs> Yeah, like a godfather or something. Like it was just things like that where I was like, no wonder it hit him so hard because they really did think that they were just gonna glide to the end without any upset. Hold yeah. that thought. I'm gonna plug in my computer really fast. Okay, Go I'm for just, it. I'm just gonna say the god the godfather's in the chat, so oh, he's probably he is. there's also I, I believe a fake Gavin. There's a fake Gavin around. in the chat as well, but but yeah. the Godfather's in there, so he's probably very happy that Lauren didn't actually call Ron the Godfather because then Godfather Carl seventy six would have to change his oh, name. To change the Twitter name. Does anybody else's computer just die so fast? Yeah, I have. Yeah, I have mine plugged in the entire time. Oh, yeah, that like start to finish. No. Odd. Okay. Um. Is it what? Yeah. Yeah. You. Yeah. You. Yeah, it's, it's like. Um, there we go. Yeah. Well, uh, when you're situated, we, we, we haven't talked to this tribal council at all. Let's talk about the live tribal, the, the Julia yeah. tribal council. Yes. Oh God. But I wanted to ask why you guys went for Eric instead of Ron. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll do. We yeah. can do both, but I just yeah. don't forget that. I need do to know you guys first Because Eric. that's more chronological. Yeah. So I would say, um, that was not my decision. Like I am fully aware of decisions I make and fully aware of decisions I did not make. And that was one of them. And it's because I didn't have any power. Like when I say I was going to everyone, just being like, hey guys, like I'm a vote. I'm a vote, I'm a vote, I'm a vote, I'm a vote, vote. Like anyone who needs me, I'm here. And it wasn't really until Gavin and I talked where he was like, hey, what do you think about this? And I'm like, great, let's do it. Whatever you want, I'm in. Um, and I know Kelly said something along the lines of like, I don't have a plan. What's your plan? You know, I don't, I can't have a plan. And it's so true. Like we, we had, we really had no power while still having a lot of power. Like we knew we had two idols. We knew that we weren't necessarily going to be the ones going home, but it was more about how can we make social relationships and not just play vote to vote. You know, it was like, I don't want to just play to get to tomorrow. I want to play to get three days from now and four days from now and five votes from now and set myself up in a way that is beneficial and not just, Oh, here's my idol. I don't have to go home. You mm -hmm. know? So yeah, I think it's probably cause it was like three of you. It kind of reminded me of token chains where mm -hmm. the three of you were being used to take out other people consistently yeah. and had war dog not gone and messed the whole thing up. <laughs> I really feel like Aurora goes home that night if Wardog doesn't say anything. Aurora goes home, you still have two idols and Wardog at final eight. I know. Like, that's a lot of power for that, for uh, a group of three, you know, yeah. in Survivor, yeah. which, yeah. yeah. I think that, um, yeah, I mean, Wardog and I have talked through this scenario so many times. Kelly and I have talked through it. I've thought about it. It's like, if he doesn't vote Kelly and Aurora goes home, um, I really don't know where people stand. I know that Kelly and I still have idols. I know that there isn't an idol being replanted. Um, mm -hmm. I know that that changes the game a lot because that means Rick doesn't find it. Um, so on edge. It, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. on edge. So yeah, it, 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 I mean, it completely changes the game, but every move changes the game. You know, if, yeah. if Chris comes back before the merge, totally different game. If just, there's so many what ifs and shoulda, coulda, what is that it's like, I can't even sit down and process them all. War Dog <laughs> for me. <laughs> that he does. Trust me, I think he has. I think <laughs> War Dog has a spreadsheet. If War Dog ever plays Survivor again, he's going to be studying a spreadsheet the way David studied his book of puzzles. Uh, good so. luck to <laughs> War Dog because he is a mastermind, y'all. He is brilliant. For, the, for someone who named you his day five ride or die, he really threw you under the bus a couple times. It was the die part. I <laughs> the die. You got the die <laughs> part. <laughs> I really should get to the bottom of what our falling out is because he keeps bringing it up. And I'm like, 
what was this falling out? Like, I really don't know. If he's still in the chat, War Dog, let me know what this falling out was because I War mean, Dog, obviously, talk to us. <laughs> obviously, we did we did split. Like it became clear to me that he was closer with Kelly. Um, but that was fine with me because I knew that I was closer with Kelly than Kelly was with War Dog. And I'm like, okay, well, Kelly's gonna tell me everything that War Dog's saying. And as long as Ke War Dog is with Kelly and Kelly's with me, then we're still a threesome. You mm -hmm. know, it's not, it wasn't ever an issue to me. And I never went into the merge with any animosity towards him. I was like, ride or die, less you three, man. Like I was going at it, I was full force. I wasn't taking either of them to the end with me, but I was like, I will get as far as I can with y'all in the smartest way possible. And so this falling out is always interesting for me to hear. <laughs> <laughs> He didn't say anything. No, he he conveniently anything. has disappeared. Conven now he's, he's studying. Now he's, he's back. Yeah. yeah, he's studying he's for the studying for the bar, quote unquote. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's then let's let's hear this live tribal then, I Lauren, because going into it, who did you think was going home? Oh God. Um <laughs> I knew something was up. Like literally what you saw on screen is exactly how it felt at camp. It was so off. I love Gavin to death, but that boy, you can read like a book, <laughs> which is why I knew something was up going into the tribal where I got voted out, but that's further along. Um, read him like a book. He can't look you in the eye. Victoria doesn't want to talk to you. Aurora pretending to sleep. Like there's just so many tells. I'm like, something's wrong. Something's wrong. It's not David. You know, there's, we don't know something, but again, it's like I had an idol. So I was like, okay. It's not gonna be me. If anything happens, it's probably gonna be Kelly. And if Kelly plays her idol, I had to do the math in my head of like, okay, who do I know is voting for David? And then figure out, okay, if those many people voted for David, are there still enough votes for me to have to play my idol? That's what I was thinking going into that tribal because if Kelly was gonna get votes, which I assumed if we were gonna be blindsided, she would, and she played her idol, I didn't wanna just throw my idol away, sorry. <coughs> throw my idol away for nothing. Um, and so that was kind of what I was thinking. We get there and all of a sudden it was like, you don't see it, but Aurora and I have this long conversation, just like across everyone. We're sitting at opposite sides and she's like, less you three can't get their stuff together. And I'm like, you think we don't know that? Like, <laughs> <laughs> of course you can't get her shit together. <laughs> it's like, we know that like, it's Leslie three and Leslie two. Like we are not together. We get it. We know this. It is known. And <laughs> she's like, she starts saying stuff about like, well, at least comma is like open about being dysfunctional. It's like, what? Like it was just, nothing was making sense. And then all of a sudden you just see it. You see it on screen. The editors, man, that tribal, they edit it so well because Julia just starts digging a hole because during the day, Julie, who has just been blindsided, her emotions are so raw. She had come to me multiple times during that day crying, like telling me she just didn't feel wanted. She didn't feel like she was a part of something. Julia and Victoria didn't do a good job of making her feel comfortable. Like that's what it comes down to, I think. And I can't talk, I can't really speak for Julie, but from my perspective, it came down to the fact that they didn't make who would have been their number one alliance feel comfortable because I don't remember if it shows on screen, but Julie says, I think it could be me or Ron tonight. It could be me or Ron tonight. It could be me or Ron tonight. That makes the cut, yeah. Because okay. Ron Ron looks – I don't think I'm exaggerating. Ron looks like he's crying. Yeah. Or had, yeah, he was shaken up. Yeah. Like he's – because like Eric was his guy. And then Ron realizes, oh, God, comma strong's over. I can't trust anybody. Like mm -hmm. he, was, he was living like the life of luxury there for the first however many days. And then all of a sudden it's like, wait. Yes. And – from what we all understand, this is the day after the Eric yes. Blind side. So right. it's Again, as rude as it can be. I'm horrible at days. I, I think it is. That's what I've kind of heard throughout the Survivor community. <laughs> is the day after. What people tell me. I'm <laughs> um, I think that, yeah, it was. They just, they didn't make them feel comfortable enough. So we're sitting there and I'm sitting right next to Julie. And Julie kind of turns to me and she's like, I don't feel comfortable. I don't feel comfortable. What do you want to do? And I was like, what do I want to do? What do you want to do? Like, what do you mean? And so then that you kind of see it evolve into Rick who takes control of the situation. Like all, I will give credit where it's due. Rick says something along the lines of like, do y'all want to work together? And the thing is we did want to work together. So him saying that was like, 
yet like yes it started it but we needed him you know he was the yeah. one we had been waiting for to work together so for him to say that it was like yes We've been wanting to work together. What do you mean? <laughs> and so then, you know, everyone starts getting up and we're jumping everywhere. And War Dog and I are talking. He's like, who do you want? And I said, I want Victoria because I never trusted her. I thought she was way too smart um, for anyone's good. And he says, well, who do you want, Julie? And Julie says, I think she said Julia. And War Dog goes, Julia. And I could be getting this sequence of events wrong, but that's <laughs> how it came from my perspective. Um, and then Kelly's talking. And then I'm pretty sure Rick goes to Kelly and says, I have an idol, I'll play it tonight so you can trust me, which is why he ends up playing it for David, which is what I heard. I, I don't know if that's correct or not, but that's what Kelly told me. And it's so Yeah, it, uh, that's cool to like hear you clear that up though. I forgot to ask Kelly that and I wish I would have on the last podcast because I was wondering, like David's played before, he knows he's not going home at that point. Right. Yeah. Like, he just knows he's not going home. So like, what's the point of that yeah. idol being played? Yeah. But so I guess it- well, from what I have heard, and again, Rick could probably attest to this better than I can. Rick told Kelly he had an idol to try and gain trust and said he would play it that night, which is why I believe he gets up and says so that we don't have any more secrets and gives mm. the idol. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that makes that's kind of how that went, um, which I respected and honestly was David's downfall. But, mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah. And then I don't really know why I've, I don't really know how it ended honestly that was a, that was such a long travel and it was such a blur but I remember sitting down knowing and Julia knowing that she was going home like there was nothing she could do about it she had really dug herself a deep hole at that point I mean it was just like deeper and deeper and deeper and everyone was like well, I don't want it to be me you know and this person's mm -hmm. someone we can all agree on and Julie was adamant that it'd be Julia because I think that she had just treated her badly during that day Mm -hmm. It's funny that Julie is so adamant that it's Julia after wanting to get Aurora out, like literally the entire game. I mean, we're we we might be talking to Julie very soon. So oh, <laughs> I love her. Uh, yeah, uh, I, the, the, her Instagram post last night was adorable. Yeah, she's so cute. I know we really did have such a good relationship. Um, she's a great person. I think that that tribal is a great example of the fact that Survivor is about how you make people feel. It does not matter yeah. how many times you say something to someone. It doesn't matter if you say we're good, we're good, we're good. It's how you make them feel at the end of the day. And Julie mm -hmm. didn't feel safe and Ron didn't feel safe. And that was less you three's time to pounce. And you did. And then, yeah. and then who you, says you're dysfunctional and then you all take control. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Who says you're dysfunctional? You all take control. <laughs> you voted together. Less you three was not dysfunctional. It was like less you as a whole mm -hmm. dysfunctional. Because <laughs> I was gonna say you finally take control, and then it goes David, and then it goes Kelly, and then it goes War Dog, and then it's like whoops. <laughs> it was. I would Oops. say, yeah. I remember. I don't know. I think for me, what well, after the Kelly vote was really where I came into my own, like. Kelly gets voted out and I'm like, okay, I don't have a shield anymore. I know that her idol is out here. I have an idol still. I've luckily made relationships with enough people to feel secure. So let's do this. And so really what happens is, you know, we vote out War Dog and that was a large decision on me and Julie and Gavin, because I think if me, Julie and Gavin had decided, hey, we'll vote with War Dog and Rick, which was a conversation at some point and we'll vote for Aurora, then maybe the game changes. After that, um, Ron goes next, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The thing about this is it's so funny is we're sitting at camp every day, like all the time. And people are saying, oh, there aren't any idols. Like there are not idols. There are no idols on this season. <laughs> if there are idols, they're coming from Edge. Like we don't have idols. And I'm sitting there like, yeah, you guys are right. There are no mm -hmm. idols. But don't go looking not for them. Zero. They're not here. And so, which is why everyone felt super comfortable with leaving Rick alone and giving because they thought that he would stop looking because he had Ron's advantage menu, right? Mm -hmm. And so he has Ron's advantage menu and everyone's like, oh, he's fine. He's going to play that. It'll be great. And in my head, I'm thinking, no, like he's not <laughs> stupid. Like he, he knows because he was gone too much. And he, and then all of a sudden the thing about Rick is when he's comfortable, he doesn't do anything and he just sits in the shelter and like sits there and does nothing and just like smiles at you. And when he's not comfortable, he's like really mean and runs around camp and like, all the time, <laughs> right? and so it's like he all of a sudden started acting really comfortable. And I'm thinking, I know, I know he found that idol because I have been looking, 
I have been looking and I've been looking and I cannot find Kelly's idol. It's nowhere to be found. He has to have it. Like he mm -hmm. has. So we have that conversation that you see between Victoria and I, and I really don't remember how it started. And um, we were, we had been talking about it. And I think it originated from the fact that we were really uncomfortable with the way that Ron had chosen the two people to go on the family visit because Ron, I guess had promised final three to Victoria, maybe, or there was some sort of relationship there. And Ron and I had some sort of working relationship as well. And it was very clear that he did not want to work with us um, at that point. And we were talking and we're like, how do you feel about Ron? And she was like, I'm in. And I'm like, I'm in. And it really, for me at that point, I was praying that Rick had an idol Mm -hmm. because I wanted R R Ron gone at that point because now it has switched to Rick is target number one, right? Everyone's focused on Rick. Everyone wants Rick. Everybody wants Rick out. But if we can just get everyone to rally and take out those people that are kind of underneath Rick, then we'll still have the majority to take out Rick. Obviously that, you know, we tried and we couldn't do it, et cetera, et cetera. But that was my thinking. It's like, I really hope that Rick does have an idol at this tribal because if we vote for Ron, and Rick goes home. Great, Rick went home. But we're gonna have to go back to camp, and Ron's gonna be pissed. And I'm, we're gonna have to deal with that and the fallout of that whole situation. Um, and when he did play the idol, I was like, great, we have the numbers to vote out Ron, and he's gone, and we can just regroup the next time and take out Rick. Or honestly, at that point, it was like, okay, can we take out Victoria next? Um, I think is yeah, Victoria Aurora. Um, but yeah, so that was kind of my thinking in that situation. So, do you think you would have ended up? beating like julian gavin like is that why you were tr like do you think like that would have been your dream final three i mean i can't i really don't like saying oh yeah i think i would have beaten them obviously those were the two people that i felt i had the best chance against and that's only because i felt like i had a different story than them um i felt like okay i played for x amount of days more than julie did because she didn't play really until the merge you know she didn't have to play the survivor i was playing and I also felt like I was in on everything with Gavin pretty much from the merge, yet I was maybe more of a prominent person during those conversations. And I don't know how the jury felt and I cannot attest to how they would have voted. I have no idea, but those were the two people that I felt like I needed to sit by, mm -hmm. um, which is why I convinced Victoria to vote out Aurora, which is actually a funny story that they didn't show. The reason, so, okay, you know how everyone was like, oh my gosh, Rick totally tricked them into voting Aurora. <laughs> okay, no, that's not what happened. <laughs> and this is actually a podcast that I listened to all the way through of yours, mostly because it was talking about me and I loved it because I'm <laughs> a narcissist. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but, uh, that, that's fair. That's I, fair. That's, I would 100% do that. <laughs> but I was like, okay, so I don't want Julie to go home. I love Aurora and I respect Aurora, but I don't think I beat Aurora. I think that people vote for Aurora over me. So at this point, I didn't think that Gavin would go for voting out Victoria yet, but I knew that Gavin would go for voting out Aurora. So I go to Gavin, you see that. And I say, Hey, like, what do you think about voting out Aurora? And he says he wants to talk to Vic and you see me be like, okay, well I'm down to vote her out without Victoria, which probably was, maybe a blunder on my part, but also I felt like Gavin and I were closer than him and Victoria. And I also felt like Gavin knew he couldn't beat Victoria, which is why mm -hmm. I said that. N making him feel like I don't, I am not close with Victoria. I'm close with you, which was the reason that I, I said those things. I didn't know he went to Victoria and they were talking about, you know, <laughs> that, so thanks Gavin. But what happens later on is I say, I'm going to go talk to Julie. So I talk to Julie and I say, we're not going to vote for you. I'm going to get the numbers to vote for Aurora, just so you know. Um, what has what has Rick told you? And Rick said, and she told me that Rick um, had said he had an idol and was maybe going to play it for her, probably not, but that she wasn't going to vote for me. So I was like, okay, great. That's all I knew. So I decided to go talk to Gavin and Victoria, and I say, hey, Vic, um, I just talked to Julie and she told me that Rick's idol is real. He's planning to play it for her and they're going to vote for you. So if you're willing to bet your entire game on the fact that Rick doesn't play his idol for Julie, totally down. It's not my name on the block. But if you aren't, then we should probably vote Aurora. And she says, great, let's vote Aurora. And then you see Travel. What, what was our take? I don't remember our take. I was I trying to think. think. We I feel like we defended you and said you that did. you weren't tricked, right? 
Yeah, you did. Yeah, okay, good. Oh, wait, wait. Yeah, you, did. you were on heart. you guys were on my side. You said that that it was already planned and that it kind of felt like people were like revolving around me in a way. Like I had relationships with everybody, which is I think this is when you said that you thought that I was gonna win because they had shown my relationship with everyone. That was did it, Phil. That was me, yeah. I well, I mean, that was like in between the if Victoria doesn't win, it must be Lauren, right? <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I, I think that's that was the point where I said, Well, it's either Victoria or it's my day one winner pick Lauren, so I don't care anymore. And yeah. we'll talk yeah. about final yeah. six in a second, but <sighs> yeah, so that's how that Aurora vote went down. Um, and obviously, like, here's the thing if I was sitting at home watching Survivor. I would think that Rick did that as well. You know, like mm -hmm. you, I, I try to watch it as objectively as possible, which is like totally not possible at all. But I think, yeah, if I'm watching this, this version, I think that Rick did that and that's a great play and he deserves the credit. It's not necessarily what happened, you know, and maybe I think maybe in retrospect, I could have been better at playing things up to the jury, but my plan was, okay, Worst case scenario, I sit by Rick at the end. I lose. I know this. I lose. But my thought process was, okay, I tell them this is what happened. This is what happened. Rick was on the wrong side of every vote on this time and this time and this time. And this is what I was doing during these votes. And whether that works or not, who knows? Um, but that was kind of my plan. It's like, I'll let him do the theatrics and be wrong every time. And I'll sit here and I'll be right every time. And hopefully that means more to the jury than standing up and playing an idol. Yeah, because it seemed like Victoria especially was like driving so many votes. And then if you were central to so many votes, Rick was just, I think that's what we said when, when Aurora goes home. It's Rick's just telling the jury it was his move, despite the fact that it's not his move, which you kind of have to do, but I like your plan. I like that you at least, because I feel like a lot of times when people start to fall into that role of like, I'm not going to beat this person, they start to be like, oh crap, like I'm just going to be stuck next to them. But I like that you had a plan in motion where it's like, yeah. if I do get stuck sitting next to Rick, I'm going to try to just be like, he played it up at Tribal. Yeah. I didn't. He was wrong every time, but he played it up. I was right every time. So why would you vote for him just because yeah, he's putting I, on a show? Exactly. And honestly, I think I lose. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I, I would assume I lose, but – that like you have to have a plan because like you saw he kept winning he kept yeah. fighting titles like it got to a point where i was like okay if i'm sitting by rick what is my argument like it got to a point i guess honestly final seven i had to think okay what is my argument against julie what is my argument against gavin what is my argument against rick and it got to a point of like how can i make myself look better than those people not even like talk my game up it was like in comparison because that's what you're doing mm. here it's a comparison it's not oh i'm so great it's i'm better than them because of this reason right. and so that's kind of what i was thinking with rick and again i don't know what happens and you, you just i can't attest to what the jury would have thought but i was on the right side of 12 out of the 15 tribals i went to so but who's counting right but that's, a, counting? But but that's, that's a great stat I did Wardog really tell you stat. that stat or did you know that stat? <laughs> he absolutely knew <laughs> that stat. Yes. He did, right? <laughs> Is it true? He, and oh God. this was something I heard that there's only two people who have ever survived 14 tribal councils. Is this a true? Um, Is this true? I don't Wardog, know. Come back. I don't and it would be you and Natalie White. You'd be the only two. Um, Rick, I think, is tied with me. Oh, okay, so Rick's in there too. Rick okay. and I both attended. Oh, you tribal. know what it was? It was it was attended tribal councils and survived without having to play idols or advantages. That's yeah. what it was. You and Natalie, why were the only two yeah. to survive all of those without needing to play something for yeah, yourself? Yeah, that's that's the stat. I don't know what the exact day is. Um, I'm pretty sure that I I hold the stat for holding on to an idol for the longest amount of time. Yeah. I don't know. I would assume so. Day two to day thirty seven. That sounds yeah, that sounds real. Yeah. I mean, because Troy Zan, I think, found his when he swapped. Yeah, he's so his swap. like day seven to thirty-nine. Um, that that sounds legit. Hey, you know what? We can't think of anybody else, so you're right as far so as that's it. Or whatever. Where's your stat? I'm right, so it's great. <laughs> Something else like that you probably hold the record for, or maybe it's not a record, but we didn't talk about it once, Lauren. And I'm not gonna let you off the hook. Get out of here. You passed out. Like, what is say, that? We're an <laughs> hour and 39 minutes in, and we, we haven't talked about. We it. didn't talk about that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wanted to warn you before the podcast. Like, these go long. If you like, you're gonna pass out. Like, we'll just stop. The I podcast, know, Phil. That would, oh, that would have been a good. I know. Good I totally one. forgot. I couldn't get it <laughs> in. Segment. Yeah. We're kind of jumping all over. Um, 
Yeah, I'd say that was pretty indicative of how I was feeling at that moment. Um, <laughs> like I was really depleted. I also think that's like that's never happened to me before. I've never passed out. Um, so it was a little. I don't want to say it was scary because I wasn't scared at the time. It was scarier watching it back than it actually happening. So yeah. really, when I walked into that challenge, I was built for that challenge, y'all. Like my <laughs> calves were built for that. I was not tired. I was not, I mean, I was tired, but like my calves weren't, I was ready to stand on that pole or whatever that was that perch for hours. I would have done it for hours. And I just remember standing there. And again, this is really, really groggy for me. Like, I don't really remember everything, but Shocking. I said something like, I think I said to Aurora, I'm going to need medical. And she kind of laughed and she's like, shut up. Like, shut up. <laughs> screw you, Lauren. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, um, I was like, yeah, I just kind of feel like I'm going to pass out. And she was like, are you okay? Kind of like, she wasn't really entertaining me in this conversation. And then I think I went into this very sm short, small whispering of, oh gosh, I'm really dizzy. And you could, everyone can hear it on screen because I have a mic on. Right. And I don't remember anything after that, other than waking up with Dr. Joe and Jeff standing over me. Uh -huh. Um, yeah. And I was just so angry. Like I wasn't scared at all. I didn't feel like, like the medical team was taking incredible care of me. Um, I just was so mad that I lost. Like genuinely my heart was mm -hmm. like, I can win something finally. And my body won't let me like, I, I can't do it. My body just shut down and passed out. And now I lost. You know who else had a very similar thing happen to them at an individual immunity challenge? Who? Joey amazing. Yo. I do. Yes. Yeah. So like me, you were just amazing. summoning your, your inner Joey amazing. Yeah, you want to be remembered as the female <laughs> version here. I feel like what? <laughs> that's Lolly Amazing. That's the Lolly, that's the Lolly name. Amazing. Oh, good. I should change my Instagram handle. <laughs> you should. Lolly Amazing is great. That Just is so <laughs> funny. Um, um, what was that? Oh well, I remember when, when you said you were talking to Aurora a little bit. I I don't think we saw that, but we were shown you saying either yeah. to the camera or to someone, "I'm about to black out." Yeah. And I remember being so impressed that, like, in your blackout state, you knew to convey like something bad is about to happen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, and I don't know. I, I really don't like that. That is a very gray area for me in terms of <laughs> knowing the sequence of events. But I would say that it just started kind of getting black. Like I just, I couldn't stay focused. You know, I'm standing yeah. up there and I'm just trying to look at something. I don't know how Victoria kept her eyes closed the whole time. Like I was trying to balance. Um, so good, amazing. But I just was trying to focus on one thing. And then all of a sudden I kind of sway back and forth. You kind of see me try mm -hmm. and gain not consciousness but try and gain some sort of um i don't even know balance maybe and i'm looking at something and all of a sudden just like black is creeping in all around my eyes and i can't get it to stop like i i'm trying to be trying to stop it i'm just like sitting there being like oh i'm gonna black out i'm gonna black out i'm gonna black out <laughs> and I, I couldn't i i don't remember what happened i just felt like, okay, maybe I can push through this enough to where Aurora and Victoria fall before I do. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I just, I just fell. So I, I'm going to ask you the question because your take is really the only one that matters as of far course. as I'm concerned. My take on everything is really the only it's one. That so yes. But especially for this. Yeah. So you're laying oh, there. Oh, yeah, this is good. You're yeah. laying there. Aurora is trying to negotiate with Victoria. Yeah. How do you, obviously you don't feel anything about it in the moment because yeah. you're just you feel more in the body, I'm, I'm um, but, but how do you feel about, like, do you fault Aurora for this or how do you feel about it? Yeah. I think that if people are going to cheer for me for pushing myself to the edge and trying to win a challenge, then they should cheer for Aurora as well. Like for me, I don't fault her at all. She's just trying to win. And maybe that's just because Aurora and I have this like weird competitive relationship where we get it. Like we just want to win everything. I don't fault her at all. I think she was in a really hard position with her alliance. I think that she felt like, Hey, Lauren's fine. We're still playing. The, like she's fine. She's there. She's talking. Everything's great. And actually, I don't know if I was talking at that point. <laughs> you were still, you, you, you were might still kind of been. just yeah, there. there. Might have been dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, she doesn't owe me anything. We're not family. We're not friends. I mean, we are, but we're not. We're competing against each other. And at the end of the day, I don't know that I would have done anything differently. 
Like I really don't. And so no, not one part of me ever faulted her. And I kind of felt like you go girl, like you get that immunity necklace. Well, even it sounds like you were trying to warn her, her or somebody that you weren't feeling well and she didn't, and she didn't, even care, listen. Yeah, exactly. she didn't care when you were alive. She didn't care when you're on the ground. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> so the last thing before we get to the finale here, uh, yes. You, mm. but the last thing before we get to that, was it the, was it the taste of the food that was getting you? Were you legitimately sick? Like what was it with the food that, oh, yeah. that just wore yeah. you down as much? As That's you? such a good question. And I don't even know that I can answer it. It's just, I tried eating rice the first night on Lesu and I threw it all up. Okay. Um, and so then I tried it again the next morning and I threw it all up. Um, and it got to the point where I was so nauseous. I wasn't even really hungry. Like, I think you see a part where they offer me coconut. And I'm like, no, like I just don't. I was want about to ask about coconut. Yeah, It's like nothing, 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 nothing. I did not have a bite of food from day eight to day 17. Nothing. Um, wow. I just drank water. Um, and it, was because I just, my stomach couldn't handle it. I don't know what it is. Um, I just felt like if I eat something, if I try to even eat the rice, I'm going to throw it up. I'm so nauseous that I don't want the rice. So why even expend the energy of throwing up? Because I'm not gonna get any of the calories anyways. I'm just spending more energy. I might right. as well sit here and be sick. I was genuinely wasting away. Alexa, we're, we're asking the same question. Um, Go ahead. So, in the second half, do you think like there were more food? I don't know if there were more food options. Well, like what brought I, you back? I, guess. I definitely was able to eat a lot after the merge. Like <laughs> I, I really think that I probably lost like 20 pounds before the merge. And then I put on like eight, right? Like I don't know. <laughs> but I get to the merge and I'm eating, like I try to eat as much as I can. And now I'm looking back on it. I'm like, girl, you have like, a sandwich and a half, you know, like I really, didn't yeah. that. but I think it was like the bread and just the, um, like the, I don't, I don't know. I'm not a doctor, but like the carbs that just were able to soak up what was ever in my stomach. I'm not sure, but having a intermittently being able to eat because so I eat at the merge on day 17 and then I don't eat again until day 24. I mean, I have, I had a little bit of rice, but I was eating a little bit of rice, like a little bit. Day 24, I believe, is pizza. And then day 25 is the burger reward that they cut out. So you don't see that. But we, Kelly, me, and Gavin win that. Um, and so I've had pizza, burgers, and then Kelly goes home. And then we win the next reward and we go to the spa. And then I believe the next one is the family visit. So I don't win that. Um, but then I win the, hel or Gavin wins the helicopter and takes me. So good. <laughs> So good. That is, I like, I will never be able to thank Gavin enough. Amazing. So much fun. The coolest thing I've ever done in my entire life. Just thank you, Gavin. Um, <laughs> but then the next one is when Julie wins the immunity challenge and she can pick someone for reward and she picks me and Chris. So, so, so you were like, you were really playing survivor the second half of the game. Yeah, just right? like, I was just, like, I'm like, oh my gosh, all these this is fun. I, yeah. I was like, this Survivor is so fun. Is this what winning feels like? <laughs> like, I have no idea. So it's, it's like, it's like if they ever asked you to play again, it's like, yes, as long as I can like be on that tribe, but no, if I'm gonna be on Manu again. Oh like, God, let me know how good my tribe's gonna be. Yeah. Um, I'm not really sure who looked at the tribes and said that they looked even. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't help that War Dogs got more muscles than anybody else out there, mm -hmm. but he's just got muscles. You doesn't know? matter how to use them. <laughs> I, they really screwed him over on that one edit where he's throwing the sandbags and he's missing them. Oh and my! For me and I like hit it right on. I'm like, okay, you guys are jerks. <laughs> yeah, it was that's so it. The, the soccer player is throwing beanbags yeah. better than the guy with the, the baseball and basketball. Oh, I love War Dog. I love War Dog so much. He's so great. Uh, War Dog's the best. He's the most fun to troll because he trolls harder than anybody does. else in the world. Yeah, he's so great. And that's what he loves. He's so great. Um, but yeah, so I would say that it was, I don't know what it was. I just genuinely could not eat. And I did not have a bite of food from day eight to day 17. That's that insane. Is, no, so that's, I don't think you're supposed to not eat for nine days, Lauren. <laughs> 
What'd you say? I said, I don't think you're supposed to not eat for nine days. I'm just, I know. Yeah. When, when, when War Dog says I was saying food merge, food merge, like he's not joking. It mm. really was. <laughs> the two words, yeah. that, was probably, that was probably our falling out. It was probably me being like food merge, food merge, food merge. <laughs> yeah. He's trying to talk strategy with you and that's all you're food saying. Merge. I'm like, I'm sorry. Did you say food? <laughs> <laughs> that's that's don't just vote crazy. Me out any food. So it makes sense that you can't remember the days that much if you don't eat for nine days. You're yeah. probably. Yeah. I mean, I think it was Kara who had said to us on her on her tell all where she was like, "I think I actually hallucinated at one point." Like, oh, absolutely. Like I was not okay. I mean, when the sun would come up and I'd be like, "Okay, when is the sun gonna go down? Like, when can I go to sleep again and it be okay?" Because my body just. I, I couldn't walk down the beach to get firewood. I was such a waste on Lesu, such a waste. And I feel so bad for David, for Rick, for Kelly, for Wardog for putting up with me because I couldn't, I could barely function. Like really could barely function. What would have happened to you had you been voted out the night Rick was voted out and you had to go to Edge of Extinction? Oh, good question. Wow, that is such a good question. I have genuinely never thought of that. Um, I probably would have cried. <laughs> so funny is, I remember thinking when I heard about Edge, I was like, these assholes, you don't even get to be voted out and go eat. Now you got to vote out and go suffer. Like, and yeah. you can't say no. You cannot say no. You no. have to go. You know, and you can't quit while you're out there. So, yeah, I don't know. I really try not to think about that. I'm just very thankful that I did not get voted yeah. out. Um, but yeah. Because I, I know you wouldn't have I was wanted trying. to quit, but, but I almost feel like. I could have seen you been like medevac at some point if you really weren't eating and then you're going there and if you can't eat, like I could see it being like, all right, Lauren, like we're dragging you off the beach now. Yeah. <laughs> like pull me into the ocean. Slowly. Yeah, yeah <laughs> exactly. The good thing about you float away. <laughs> yeah, they only had 17 people on you this season. You take the sail away. and just like put your corpse on the sail. Literally. Like, <laughs> like, swing out. It's like a pirate warning, you know? Yeah. It's like... it, was, it was so bad. It was so bad. I don't know. That would have been really scary, honestly, to have to go there. Um, I assume at some point I would have been able to start eating the rice. I don't know because I don't know what it was that triggered it. And I don't know what it was that stopped it other than I got to eat some bread. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And there was no bread over on edge. So yeah. no, they just had squids and sh fishing gear. Yeah. Yeah. Fishing oh, gear. Oh, and that, that, uh, where did that, 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 that they, that they killed and it just like sat there and tried yeah, to right? I was like, Chris, where was this, uh, fishing, fishing yeah. from day one no. to eight? Yeah. How come we didn't get fishing gear? Huh? Yeah. Don't me start. Uh, yeah. No, I won't. I won't. I almost asked Kelly a question the other day and she was just like, you saw it. I mean, she almost, it. She, it down. Yeah, she almost jumped out of the chair. Um, well, Lauren, I know you're going to find this hard to believe, but we're in an hour and 52 minutes. So I feel like this is a good time. Yeah, I know. We haven't, the finale yet. Wow. We haven't even gotten to the finale yet, but I want to start I off, talk, man. I want to start off the finale with this. Okay. okay. Can't wait. So I meet, I meet Lauren on Tuesday night. And she's got her whole crew with her and she looks at me and she goes, everybody be nice to him. He was nice to me. Yep. And, and I'm like, Oh, this I is just listen to your Aurora um, podcast on the drive down actually. Yeah. So, so like, it's great. I'm like, Oh, this is awesome. I'm like, I'm talking to Lauren. Victoria is like standing right there. I go over to Victoria. I'm like, I think you're going to win. It's like all this. Oh, I'm no. like so nice to Lauren and she's so like happy about it. And then I watch the finale and final six happens. And I'm like, how am I going to be nice to Lauren tonight? She just took out Victoria and herself at the exact same time. And I'm walking around the bar on the Tuesday night acting like it's either Victoria or Lauren. And like, I know what I'm talking about because it's Survivor. Oh my God. Yeah. The amount so, of people that came up to me at that pre-party that said, and maybe they're just being nice. I don't know. But they said, we think you're going to win. Like we really think we think you're going to win. And I think I had probably just talked to them and said, Lauren's going to win. Probably. And I think <laughs> that was kind of the consensus is people thought either Rick or I were maybe going to win at that point. Mm -hmm. Um, and I remember thinking, Oh my gosh, I hope so too. Like I oh. said, many times. I was like, me too. And people were like, I can't wait to see how you play your idol. I'm like, me too. <laughs> <laughs> thinking, Oh my gosh, you guys are in for the worst surprise yeah <laughs> and on, on wednesday i didn't even think lauren was going to be there and i just found her like in the bar and i just walked by and i just stared at her and all she said was i was you know what i was, she was a party all she said yes you were surrounded by like 900 people and all you said was we'll talk i'm sorry phil we'll talk <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk 
I'm sorry. <laughs> that was it. That was it. And I was like, you know what? That's enough. But like, I had to, I was like, how am I going to be nice to her tomorrow on the finale recap? Because you just, but, but it was, it was one fell swoop. <laughs> there goes me. Everybody, everybody's cheering during the finale. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, Oh my God, you would have thought that I was either related to you or related to Victoria with how angry I was at that final six tribal council. I was like losing yeah. my mind. Everybody else is all excited. Like it's this blind side. You actually played the idol. Victoria goes home. It's this crazy thing. It's really emotional. And I'm just like, oh I know. man, yeah. there it goes, there it goes. But Lauren, goes. tell us what's, tell us what was going on at final six. Okay. Come here. So pretty much I, we're going to get our person from edge and I called it our, um, our puppy. We're going to go pick up our puppy that nobody really wants, but we have to go pick up our puppy. <laughs> that is so good. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, let's go to the pound, pick up our, pick up our puppy. <laughs> there anyway. Pick up uh, Chris and we come back and you see Chris. He's like, I don't really care. Like, I just, I just want to make it to like tomorrow. You know, like I'm just thankful to be back in the game. And I immediately am like, this is BS. Like you're a liar. You're a liar. I know you. And there's no way that you're sitting here being like, I just want to make it, you know? Just but happy to be here. Right? So <laughs> I'm thinking, I have two thoughts during this process. And I think you hear me say it when I talk about Ryan Reynolds, but I'm like, hmm. yes. There's no way that, that the jury's going to vote for someone that played 12 days because Gavin and I had had this conversation and Julie and I had had this conversation as well. Where is the cutoff? Where is the cutoff of when the edge person becomes an actual threat? Is it the merge? Is it Kelly? Is it day two? Like we, we didn't really come up with a conclusion, but I came to a personal conclusion of anyone pre-merge is not a threat in my book. They haven't mm -hmm. done anything. I've been, I've now played, I mean, at that point I had then played, I mean, total I've played what Chris played less than a third of the amount of days that I played in my head. You know, he obviously played on edge, but typical survivor. I played three times as many days as Chris, right? And so I thought, not a threat. He's like, there's no way because I didn't know what was going on at Edge. I didn't know that they were strategizing. I didn't know that they were becoming friends. Like this is beyond me. And to, in my perspective, they were out of the game. So that's thought number one. Thought number two is no way Chris wants to sit by Rick because he knows Rick is going to win. And no way Rick wants to sit by Chris because they kind of have the same story. Mm -hmm. And he... And I assumed that he knew that Rick's not making it out of final four without having to go to fire unless he wins immunity. And if Chris is still sitting there, Chris is going to be the one that takes him to fire. Whether or not Chris wins immunity or not, Chris will take Rick to fire and everyone will make sure that happens, right? So mm -hmm. those are my two main thoughts. So we go into the immunity challenge and Julie wins immunity. And, you know, Julie and I are talking, Chris and I are talking. We all kind of come to the conclusion that, yes, Victoria needs to go, which was something that we had, I have told you, I knew this before Chris ever got there. Nothing Chris said from Edge really swayed me in regards to Victoria. Um, so I know that Chris is going to be voting for Victoria. So I know that's one vote on Victoria. I know that Gavin, Julie, and myself are going to be voting for Rick because we don't know if Rick's idol is real. And if it isn't, we want him to go home. He's mm -hmm. you know, target number one. So that's three votes on Rick. And I assume that there's no chance that Rick is stupid enough to not vote for Chris. There's just mm -hmm. no way. And I didn't know. I didn't know that they had formed a relationship on edge. I didn't know that they were working together. So I am going into tribal thinking, okay, Victoria has now told Gavin that she's going to vote for Chris. Gavin has told me this. So I know that Chris, or I think Chris is going to get two votes and Victoria is going to get one vote and Rick is going to get three votes. Mm -hmm. So Rick plays his idol and it's real. I want Victoria to go home and I want to be the one that sent her. So mm -hmm. I have to play my idol for Chris, which is why I did what I did. Not knowing that Chris had an idol at five not knowing that he was working with Rick and not knowing that Rick voted for Victoria, you know, yeah, yeah. I, just, I didn't have enough information. And honestly, if I go back to that moment, hindsight is 2020 and maybe I play it differently, but with the information I had at that point, I think I play it the exact same because I wanted to be the reason Victoria went home. I needed a big move and going into the next tribal, I had the numbers. There was no way I thought Chris had an idol. I'm like, there, I didn't even know that 
I, I didn't know. I didn't know he had an idol and I didn't think there was any way that you give someone an idol at final six. And there's no way you give the other half back at final six. You know, that's what yeah. that's what I've been waiting for somebody to say. I haven't heard anybody say that. Right? We I mean, talked about that a lot. Like, everyone is like, everyone's like, oh, Lauren's so stupid for playing her idol. I'm like, okay, is everyone missing the fact that Rick gave the other half back? He gave the other half back. If he doesn't get the other half back, I'm in the final four. Rick goes to fire with me, and then we see what happens. Like, why is this so it's all but it's all my fault, of course. Of course. Of course. I mean. It's because yeah. of you, Victoria went home. So yes, it is all your fault. That's true. Well, <laughs> yeah. It's really not because of me that Victoria went home because Chris only had one vote and Victoria had two from Chris and Rick. True. That's yeah. true. Oh. And just to finish your I just need to blame somebody for Victoria. Yeah. Okay. I just well, you, need to you should blame Rick or Chris. Okay. Not yeah. Me. But to your point, Lauren, the with the information that you had, like as you just described, that was a perfectly mm -hmm. great move. Like that, that was the, you, you do it again every time. I would honestly. And I, I know that it, it looks bad on TV. It, and the thing is it looks bad on TV because Chris won. So yeah. they have to make it look like Chris, like bamboozled me and, you know, made all these moves. If I win, I look brilliant. Right. Yeah. It's like, that's just yeah. that's how it is. And Chris played an amazing game with the how, five, four days he was in. I don't know. What day did he come in? It was three days. Five. Okay. So however many days he was there, he played an incredible game. And obviously that warranted a lot of people's votes, but I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't have the information. I was playing on the information I had prior thinking that I was going to have the numbers going into the next tribal. So if this didn't work out, which it didn't, okay, that's fine. I have Gavin and Julie. They'll vote for Chris with me. You know, I, mm. I didn't, I didn't know that there were going to be three people immune at the next tribal. Cause, cause there's no way, I mean, and you've kind of said this, but I just really want to hit it over the head. Like you're sitting there, Chris comes back and it's like, that's your reward. Like you're back in the game. Yes, absolutely. I thought yeah. there's no chance that someone is given an idol at six. There's, there's just no chance. And there's absolutely no chance someone gives them the other half because again, you guys are watching it and you're like, well, of course, like Rick went in with an idol. Like, I guess Chris has one. I didn't know that Edge gave him that idol. Like, I didn't know. I just assumed, I don't know what I assumed because Rick wasn't sharing information with me. We didn't really have a relationship, honestly, after the merge. So anything he was saying, I assumed was a lie. Like you saw me call him out. I was like, you're lying about whether or not you found this idol at Edge. You know, he mm -hmm. had found it on, on the beach. So I didn't know. And I didn't know that Chris was going to have an idol at six. I thought there's no chance that he gets one. He just, he was voted out on day eight. He was voted out on day eight and he came back on day 35. Congratulations, you're back in the game. Yeah, I, I didn't know. And I think that it's easy to watch the show and say, oh, you're so stupid. Chris has an idol. But here's another thing. Okay, let's say I don't have an idol. Let's say I don't have an idol and I can't play it at final six, right? Victoria still goes home. I don't look nearly as stupid the next tribal because all that's happened is I got idled out, right? Like mm -hmm. yeah. having an idol has so much power and so much expectation that you don't even understand it because all of a sudden everyone's like, Lauren is so dumb for playing her idol. Okay, guys, I had an idol. Like no one's saying Victoria is so dumb for not finding an idol. Like no one's saying that. And she still got voted out. It's like people are are judging the fact that I played this idol trying to make a big move, trying to win, it not working out, me living to see the next day to try to find another one. I don't find another one and I get idled out. You know, it's not because I played my idol that I was voted out. Yes, if I keep my idol, I'm still in, but not everybody <laughs> has an idol. Not everybody has an idol. So, two, yeah, go ahead. Two things, you did find an idol the next day. And then, <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then also, <laughs> But also, I understand what you're saying because it's what War Dog's been saying the entire time. Because everybody's, since we've been doing these tells, obviously everybody's right. giving War Dog flack now because it's like, yeah. why did you get rid of Wentworth? And then obviously everybody likes Wentworth yeah. more than War Dog. So it's like, come on, War Dog, like you ruined, you broke our heart with Kelly going. Home. Of course. But like War Dog said, you're playing to win a million dollars. You're not playing to get second, to get third, to get fourth. So while for you, using the idol at six makes no sense 
if you think you're going to win the game, if you just get to the final three, because like, if you think that all you had to do is get to the final three, right. you obviously don't play your idol at six because right. you played at final five, you're guaranteed to at least be making fire right. worst case scenario, go practice right. making fire. But if you don't think you can win, exactly. you have to play that idol because it's really the only chance you have to show people like, I deserve to win right. against anybody. Exactly. So I, I, didn't I, think, I didn't think that I could win, honestly, sitting at the end. I wasn't sure. I wanted to solidify it. I was playing to win at that point. And let's just say I don't play it, right? Victoria mm -hmm. still goes home, so I have it. Now the question becomes, is there an idol rehidden, right? Like, do, do we rehide an idol? Because now an idol has been played um, from Rick. And if we do, does Chris still have an idol? You know, like, I don't, I don't know. And if he does, then all of a sudden Julie's going home. And my idol means nothing. And I am now in the final four with Gavin, Rick, and Chris. And I have no moves left in my belt. I have nothing other than to beat Rick and Fire. But Chris will probably beat Rick and Fire in a bet, like faster than I can and probably more significantly than I can. So yeah. at that point, it was like I had no moves left. I had no cards left to play. This was my biggest card. And I was going all in trying to win. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense because otherwise you're sitting in like the third position. Like exactly. you're going to get third place and exactly. zero votes, one, maybe Kelly votes for you. I mean, yeah. you would hope, but um, <laughs> you would hope. I mean, Kelly, where you at? Um, but yeah, no, that makes sense. And and you're always, like you said, you're always going to get shit for yeah. playing an idol wrong. You're always, yeah. I mean, JT yeah. gets so much crap for his for his thing in Heroes versus Villains and his thing in Game Changers, but he's playing to win the game and he played a perfect game the first time and all he wants to do is play another one. And you know what? I am one of the people that has given him so much flack for that. I'm like, are you kidding me? You gave an idol to Russell? But now playing the game, I'm like, if that had worked, that's brilliant. It's brilliant. Exactly. It's so smart. And that's the thing is you just didn't have all the information. So the viewer, like you look stupid, but... If you were right, you look brilliant. So it's just like, you just yeah. don't know. You don't know. You it, play with the information and, and, and hope it works And out. like with you too, like if that move works, then yeah. you look incredible. Yeah, exactly. Instead, yeah, the internet. And, the and internet. <laughs> you know what doesn't help though, Lauren, okay. is the fact that the next day, I find the you, fake idol. You find the fake idol. And also when you get voted out, the opening of your Ponderosa is, I'm so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I, so. I am definitely the kind of person that, will never blame somebody else for my own actions. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, I I didn't feel like, oh my gosh, I can't believe Kelly told him I had an idol. Oh my gosh, I can't believe that, you know, Chris was given an idol. That was never my my first thought. I mean, now looking back on it, I'm like, okay, so this went wrong and this mm -hmm. went wrong. But initially it really was like, God, I'm so dumb if I had just kept my idol. And then you process it and you're like, no, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have changed it. But um, I do, I do find that sweet little fake idol. Um, and here was my thought process behind that, right? So Rick finds an idol very, very early within like five minutes of being awake, whatever. So I'm thinking, okay, well, two idols were played last night. So I bet two idols have be, been rehidden. And so we're looking, we're looking and Julie finds hers, right? So I'm thinking, Okay, so now there are two idols. Could there be an idol nullifier out here? We haven't seen one yet. I think it would be super interesting for an idol nullifier to come into play at the final five, but if it does, good on me. I'm gonna keep looking. And then I find this clue to the hidden immunity idol. So I know that Aubrey had the idol from Kama because Chris told me, because Aubrey had told all of them. So I'm thinking, maybe there's three idols. Like, I don't know. Hmm. I yeah. have no idea. I'm thinking maybe there are three idols, right? So I go find it. You see that whole sequence. It's just, it's a whole thing. Um, I find it and I go back and I'm sitting in my confessional and I'm just talking it out. And I'm like, there's just no way. There's, there's just no way. I've never seen three hidden immunity idols at five. Like that would just, yeah. because here's what happens. If someone who isn't in possession of a hidden immunity idol wins uh, the immunity necklace, it doesn't matter what happens at tribal. One person, that person who doesn't have immunity goes home. Yeah. So I just was thinking there's, there's just no chance. One of these are fake. Um, I hope it's not mine, but also Rick had put two um, of the, I guess, 
you know those papers you get that say congratulations you yeah. found you yeah. can put two of them in there so i actually like one of them was from his edge idol and one of them was from another idol he had found so mm. when i'm looking at i'm like two like i found one i know there shouldn't be two so i think i had a very good sense and a good idea that my idol was going to be fake going in there but also it's like i'm gonna play it like if it's fake it's fake it doesn't exactly matter. and i also don't think having a fake idol changed the way i played it all because at that point i had the numbers if chris doesn't have an idol he goes home so having a fake idol really didn't affect the game it was just kind of like haha jokes on you like it was it was kind of malicious in a way but it is it's funny to watch back. It's like, oh, my God. <laughs> not great. Not your best. If if anything, too, it shows off how much taller you are than Rick. Because yeah. while Rick had to climb the tree, you just reached up and poked it out. That's, that's another thing. He put it in the wrong place. Oh, did he really? <laughs> oh. Because he couldn't climb the tree. No, he couldn't climb the tree. So I'm looking, and it's not in the place that it says it should be, which was another signal that it was probably fake, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm looking, and I'm looking, and it's in – a different area that's easier for me to just kind of pop out. Mm. Um, and I remember thinking, this was not in the right place. Like this, this map isn't right. Um, and which is another, another red flag that I was like, <laughs> okay, this is probably, this is probably fake. So. See, all the things they can't tell you on TV because you're trying to craft the winner edit for Chris in exactly. two hours. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> in two like, hours. Yeah, exactly. You're literally trying to craft a winner edit in two hours. Yeah. So, yeah. And so you like figured there was like ninety nine point nine percent chance it was fake. Yes. Was there a conversation with Julie about hers, or did you kind of stay no. out of that? I stayed out of that. She was very, very, very excited to have found an idol. Oh. Um, it was so cute and so sweet. And I figured, look, I don't know. Rick's idol that he played, I guess two two tribals ago or something like that, was so janky. It looked so fake, but it was real. Mm -hmm. So who am I to say that her idol is fake? I don't know. I yeah. just had a feeling that one of these idols is fake. I don't think it's Rick's. <laughs> so if something's going to happen, there's nothing we can do at this point. There's so little numbers. And I was just hoping that Rick wasn't going to play his idol for Chris. And I assumed he wouldn't because I think at that point he had kind of realized, I don't want to be the one that saves Chris but I don't want to be the one that votes him out. If that makes sense. Um, that would have lost favor with the jury. If you vote Chris out. Yeah. Here. I think that's what he thought. I okay. think he was trying to play this loyal game, um, which is why he wouldn't vote Chris out. But I don't think he would have given his idol to Chris, which is what I had assumed. I assumed he would either give it to Gavin or to Julie um, to solidify their friendship, their relationship and to get them to the next tribal. Um, which is why we were voting for Chris. And there was just no way of knowing he had an idol. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's all fair. I, I mean, I wish I could argue with you, Lauren. I wish <laughs> <laughs> that's all. Yeah. I know, um, I've spent a year playing day 35 to day 37 out in my head. Like <laughs> where did I go wrong? So many places. This is why you and Wardog get along so well is because I think Wardog is still playing it out in his head. So <laughs> actively, yeah, at some point I just had to be like, you know what? It is what it is. I can't change it. And I would, wouldn't change it if I go back and do it again. So hopefully next time I don't end up uh, with an idol on day 35, someone coming back into the game and having an idol in their pocket. Let me ask you something here. If you play again and you find out there's Edge of Extinction, does <laughs> the person who comes back from Edge of Extinction have any chance of not getting your vote at the first tribal they're back? <laughs> <laughs> you saw me. I was trying to get Rick out the second he got back on that beach. Like, are you not kidding me? We voted him out once. Mm -hmm. Goodbye. Goodbye. Also, don't ask me back for an edge of extinction. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, Lauren, you might be competitive. I'm going to say you're going to say yes no matter what. <laughs> I know. I'm oh, yes. Yes. You want me to starve and play a game? I'm down. Yeah. I'm exactly. Here. This time you can't eat from day one to 17. It's like, sure. Okay, yeah, right. yes. Let's do it. Cool. Cool. Make sure every challenge involves me balancing and exerting myself to the fullest so I pass oh out God. over and over. Like, as long as the challenge is not puzzles, I'll play. Let's do it. You know, anytime it comes to puzzles, I really should have practiced those more. Really. Honestly, though, David practiced them a lot and did it really and, help yeah, him. Yeah. I, was, I was a solid second place finisher in most immunity challenges, though, if we're being honest. Yeah, you were in them till yeah. the end most of the time, but you, so, you didn't pull any off, right? You didn't actually win. No, didn't win one. 
No, but you were close. Yeah, I was a solid. I was a solid second placer. So there you go. Or <laughs> third, but you would have won it. You know, had you not. Yeah. But anyway, third had I not passed out. So okay, you vote for Gavin. Gavin. Mm -hmm. What was your take? So you get to Ponderosa. You actually go to Ponderosa. You don't have to go to Edge of Extinction. So you just go to Ponderosa. Yeah. What was like the vibe like? We saw it in the video, but was the vibe like from the jury? Were you trying to convince anybody to just vote for Gavin? If it, like, were you trying to be like, yeah. why are we going to vote for Chris to win? Or were you just like, screw it, I'm eating, I don't care. Screw you guys. Um. Okay, so to preface all of this, these people have been together since. I don't even know. Aubrey's been with Reem since day whatever. Like they've all been sitting in on Edge of Extinction talking about all the players in the game, right? So when I get to Ponderosa, these people have 37 days of conversation on me. And it seems like they all kind of had a pretty clear winner. If Rick get, got to the end, he would have won. Um, I wasn't really paying attention to it the first night I got there. I was yeah. so hungry. I was <laughs> still in shock. Um, but the next day, people were actually making pros and cons lists of Chris versus Gavin. Um, really? Yeah, I was I was not personally a part of that. Um, but yeah, there were pros and cons lists and lots of talking. And another thing is, is I don't feel like it's my place to ever um, try and argue with someone on who they're going to vote. I'm not going to try to convince you to vote for who I want you to vote for. Your vote is completely your own. You are, you can vote for whoever you want. You can vote for the person you like the best. And maybe they didn't play the game at all. Or maybe you just like the way Julie's hair looks at final tribal. Like you are on the jury. You've played this amount of times. You get to vote for whoever the hell you want to vote for. And I'm never going to sit here and argue with you as to why you should vote for somebody else. Right. Mm -hmm. So that was kind of my take. And I think that that was Kelly and Aubrey's take as well. It was like, they aren't going to sit here and tell you that you're wrong. They're not going to rally for anyone at Ponderosa. Um, and I just felt like that wasn't really my place. So that was how Ponderosa went for me. I was just kind of there to have a good time. Right. Like, <laughs> the time I got there. It was, it was, um, fire making. And so there was that whole, yeah. And then, then it's day 39 and everyone's like, Oh gosh, we're leaving tomorrow. Like there's final tribal tonight. Everybody's voting. And I'm like, can I get another round of ice cream, please? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. And I think that is, that does come from the fact that I didn't sit on edge. Honestly, I think yeah. I was kind of like immediately out of the game immediately. Like that was so fun. I'm so glad I got to do that. I'm pissed. I lost, but this is so fun. And now I get to go listen and look cute and do whatever, <laughs> you know, like really, I felt. So we get to final tribal and I think a lot of people went into that tribal knowing who they were going to vote for, yeah. but, wanting, but wanting to act like they didn't. And I'm not going to say that I wasn't one of them because I don't think, I think there was a very, very small chance that I ever voted for Chris solely because the game he played, I never saw. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. It's not the game that I experienced. It's not, to take away from the game he played because obviously it warranted enough votes to be the sole survivor and he has a million dollars and that's great. But mm -hmm. I saw Gavin's game and I know how hard it is to get to day 37, to get to day 38, to get to day 39, voting out people and then having to turn around and ask them for their vote. And I didn't feel like Chris had done that. I didn't feel like he had to deal with the social hierarchy and the paranoia and the constant day-to-day -day battle of trying to stay in the game it was just more of a relationship on edge from what I've heard. Right. It's there. A lot, no. mm -hmm. And it feels a lot easier to build a relationship when there's no threat. I mean, when there's no threat, when there's there's no threat. we can be friends. Out. Like, like out. yeah, if I'm on an Island, I'm not going to be as nice to you as I am right now. If we're playing a game for a million dollars. Yeah. And I thought Rick actually had a great point at that final trial where he was just like, how many votes who, who here has gotten zero votes this whole yes. game? And it was yeah. just Gavin. And it's like, <laughs> Even if even if you're viewing Gavin as a goat, air quotes, um, it's like he got no votes the entire game. Yep. And he was on the right side of a lot yep. of votes. No, absolutely. I, I, I say this in a lot of my um, like exit interviews. There are a lot of reasons I voted for Gavin. But one of them is he got no votes. And we all sit here and we want to reward, you know, Kelly made it this far with this many votes against her. Always a target. And, oh, you know, all these people get this. X amount of days in and they're a target every day and they get all these votes and they still make it past tribal. 
okay, the point of Survivor is to not get voted out. And in order to not get voted out, you can't get votes. <laughs> Gavin never got a vote. Like, that's incredible. It's incredible. And whether or not people think, oh, I could just sit with him at the end or he's a goat, it doesn't matter. He integrated himself well enough into social relationships in order to not get a vote. And that, I felt like, in itself warranted my vote. Because, one, he's never been voted out. And he was on the right side of a lot of votes. And I also played very closely with him. And I mm. knew the moves he was making were a lot of the moves that I had made as well. And so, I mean, at the end of the day, you can vote for who you want to vote for. And I just felt like Gavin's game was something that I wanted to vote for. And Can if, I oh, – go ahead, Phil. I was just going to say, like, did you make anything similar to that type of speech at Final Trial? Like, did you say anything similar to that at Final Trial um, or no? No. I, I mean, you see a little part of me and Kelly trying to defend Gavin when Chris kind of goes at him about being, I think, a go. Yeah. Um, we were not happy with that. And it, it was a very long tribal. And Kelly and I were, I'd say, big advocates for Gavin. I'm not going to lie. When I left Final Tribal, I thought that Gavin only had two votes. I thought that only Kelly and I had voted for him. So I was surprised at the finale to see four. Wow. Um, but I guess I, we kept trying to lob him balls, right? To be like, okay, this is what you did. You played kind of like, I, War Dog kept saying it. He's like, kind of like the Sandra game is he jumped to relationship, to relationship, to, yep. alliance, to alliance, and he was able to do it successfully. And that's how he got here. But I think a lot of people... And I, I could be wrong. I feel like they maybe felt like they needed to validate their experience and vote for Chris because mm -hmm. they lived on edge. They lived this experience. They played this game. And if they don't vote for Chris, then their game isn't valid. You know? Yeah, that's I, I totally that, that may have been mm -hmm. on their minds, and I can't attest for all of them, but that's the vibe I got. Because because if Chris doesn't win with what he did at the end, then Edge of Extinction, the it's player who comes back, exactly. never, ever wins. Exactly. So, yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm not saying that he doesn't deserve to win. Um, I just think that that was maybe in the back of people's minds. It's like, how can I not vote for Chris? I was with him for this long. He did. I can't say he didn't play the game. Because if I say he didn't play the game, then that means I didn't play the game. Right. And yeah. I think that that was on a lot of people's minds and made it very difficult for them not to vote for him. Mm -hmm. Can I ask, was there um, ever a consideration for Julie? Was there from the, from you or from the collective kind of group? I stayed out of most conversations right, right. When to who people were going to vote for. I definitely thought about voting for Julie. I mean, I loved Julie. I just think I, I say it in one of my confessionals. It's like, I felt like her game was very emotional um, and it wasn't something that a lot of people maybe respected whether or not that's true. I don't know. Um, I personally felt like Gavin's game was just a stronger argument. Um, mm -hmm. although Julie did incredible at final tribal. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't really know. I think that I was just, I worked closer with Gavin. I knew his okay. game. I knew what he had done. And I think that never getting any votes and sitting there at the end and being like, I never got any votes. I was friends with, I was in an alliance with almost every single one of you and none of y'all wanted to vote me out. And I outlasted all of you is good enough for my vote. Yeah, yeah. that there, there you go. I think that makes sense. I think there you go. <laughs> yeah. That's Lauren, a good pitch. <laughs> Lauren just pitched. I, I mean, I'm ready to vote for Gavin. I'm ready, you know, yeah. so. <laughs> I have no say, but I'll vote for him. <laughs> know, um, you know. Well, that gets you through to the end. Is there anything that we didn't talk about? You're longer than Kelly. You yeah. have an hour and 15. No, you have an hour and fifteen minutes to get to War Dog if you want to keep going for an hour and fifteen. No, if you, if no, you have nothing really to do for the rest of your life, no. nobody wants to hear me talk for another hour and fifteen. Um, no, I think we touched on everything. I'd say like we talked about my love for Kelly. Mm -hmm. We talked about my less you three, sweet less you three for life. Um, we talked about me passing out. <laughs> talked about people in the chat are saying eye rolls and mustard. Everyone else oh, talking about mustard. <laughs> Okay, we'll do mustard and then we will do eye rolls for all of you people trolling over there. Um, so, okay, so mustard. You just eye rolled, by the way, anybody who's just listening. I just want everybody to know. Just for the record, we are on our 12th tequila shot. Oh, everyone's dead. Everyone's dead. Yeah, it's just whatever, whatever. We're all having a great Thursday night. I do this, I'll take shots for every time I roll my eyes. Okay. I'm down. 
<laughs> oh my god! Could you imagine? Super my down. Mom, my mom would. Let, mom, if let's do it on like a Saturday night or something, and we'll all just we'll all just do it, and then we'll all just go out. Honestly, okay. Yes. Yeah. I'm in. Down. Mom, I'm kidding. I won't do that. Okay. But also, know. mom, don't watch the next time Lauren's on. Um, turn it off. <laughs> I know. Okay. Let me log off. So with mustard, let's see. I remember that day so vividly. It was kind of the turning point for me in regards to I knew I couldn't really trust War Dog. Um, and trust is kind of hard. It's like I knew we would vote together, but there was this level of like, if my head's on the chopping block, he's not going to save me anymore, if that makes sense. So I walked down there. Oh my God, watching it back was so awkward. <laughs> I walked down there and like they're obviously talking, right? And I like sit down and this is like, let's do three. We've been together forever. Like I could walk in on any conversation ever. We're all talking together. And all of a sudden it gets kind of quiet. And I'm like, oh, what, no. what's up guys? And Gordon <laughs> says something. I don't even know what he said. Like I haven't watched that scene. In I don't time. think he could say anything. He because he didn't see me coming and Kelly sees me coming. Right. And Kelly's like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, yeah. and, and Bordog's like, John. <laughs> Like no one knows what to do. And I'm like, okay, well, like I'll let you guys get back to whatever you're doing. Like making, like making sure they know that I know y'all are talking about me. Okay. Your tone is unreal in that scene. You're just like, well, keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> Cause I was pissed. I was like, are y'all kidding? We've been together forever and you guys are going to sit here and you guys are going to talk about me and then not come up with a good, like, Hey, uh, this is what was happening. Like at least lie. They couldn't even come with a good lie. It was so <laughs> awkward. And so honestly watching it back once I left and he goes, we need a code word. Oh, we need mustard. I was like, are you kidding? <laughs> you couldn't just maybe not talk about me like all the time. You need a code word. Oh my gosh, mustard. And then I started thinking about the amount of times that I heard War dog. I was about to ask that. I'm like, yeah, I just remember him being like, yeah, I really like mustard. Like, were you talking about me? Oh my God. Uh, I was going to ask how many times he said mustard after that. God, I don't even know. But I remember watching that scene and being like, I sent it to both of them in our group chat. And I said, y'all suck. Yeah. <laughs> I was the first one who saw it. And this slide's like right after the scene where they're, you know, they got um the secret scene of them and Wendy's mm -hmm. cane I think mm -hmm. yes. like, so it comes right after it and I go villains part two y'all suck yeah. yeah yeah there you go been a rough couple weeks for that yeah. so I war dog hasn't talked to you since no that was better falling out who knows but no it was it was honestly hilarious because my tone is just so me I'm like okay well I guess I'll let you guys get back to whatever it is you're doing I'm not an idiot and I just <laughs> walk off I'm like I don't need whatever I'm gonna go talk to somebody else so that was mustard I don't think I really even thought about it that much afterwards because Kelly and I were so close. She was telling me everything that like, or I thought she was telling me everything, you know, like she would come to me after she talked to war dog and tell me what he was saying. So I don't, I didn't feel as out of the loop. Like I think they really played up the war dog Kelly relationship, which was much stronger than I even knew. Um, but Kelly and I also had a very, very strong relationship. So that's mustard for you. <laughs> the eye rolls people i swear to you i thought i had a poker face before i went out <laughs> like i'm not kidding i was like okay like i can deal like i don't say things in social situations that i shouldn't every now and then i can't really control my face and i bet you my best friends are watching right now thinking you are a freaking liar but <laughs> i really did i was like okay i can do it watching it back i think the cameraman just zoomed in on my face <laughs> Anytime they could, I vividly remember being at camp one time and hearing, because the cameramen have like, um, I guess some sort of microphone and earpiece. I hear, zoom in on Lauren's face. Zoom in on oh. And I remember thinking, what am I doing with my face? Like, I don't even know. But it's, it's just fine. It's such a natural reaction. And at the end of it, I'm just like, I can't even handle these people anymore. And <laughs> certain things, like there's a, there's a secret scene where they come in and they're like, okay, you're going to need finesse. And I'm like, well, that's, <laughs> yeah. like, that's a loss. You know, it's just like, I, I say things with my face versus my mouth and I'm not sure if that's better or not. <laughs> um, it does make quite a good amount of gifts. And I, I I'm going to say this right now. Not once did I ever think about a gift while I was out there. Yeah. <laughs> 
ever, ever, ever. It just, I remember on the premiere night, the first gift that Survivor tweets is my face. And I'm like, <laughs> oh God, oh, this is going to be a long season. Yeah. Long it was just like, season. it was like one of those where like, Lauren, like one of the first times I like talked to you, I was like, okay. You said like the hi Lauren gift. And I was like, okay, here's a gift. And it was like, gift, gift, gift. I'm like, Jesus, Lauren, how many of these do you, you have? Are like, gif-able. She has 9,000 gifts. Like all ready to go too. Like Lauren doesn't mess around, yeah, no. but she never duplicates. I mean, mm-hmm. even your gifts of like children in diapers dancing They're are so fantastic. Good, right? I know. They're so yeah, good. So you are like the gift queen here. We so. really are a gift family. Like we okay. communicate in gifts and I think it stems from my mother. Um, but absolutely like the amount of gifts I have of me rolling my eyes in different ways. I'm like, I didn't even, what is that? What was I doing? And they just... Yeah, I do have them lined up. So if anybody ever texts me and like says something annoying, I'm just going to send you my my gifts. And I feel like if I don't use them, who is? Exactly. I, I love that you have a gift folder of yourself. Like that's the okay. dream. That is the dream. I, mean, I have a, I have like a little, someone made a little website with our gifts. And I'm like, <laughs> my, my friends are like, can you send me this? And I literally just send them the link, which is probably mm-hmm. not my best choice. But yeah, I have a folder. I'm like, okay, let's go to photos. Um, animated Lauren gifts. That one. Okay. Yes. This one. Yeah. It's so bad. It's so bad. But honestly, Kelly's are just as bad. Okay. Hers are, well, hers are something. Kelly's face at the one tribal is the funniest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> She's so good. We, yeah, we really did, um, bless CBS with our facial expressions. This season, <laughs> I feel like it's like, you know what? Here you go. Zoom in. Have y'all seen, okay, this is totally, well, not really off topic, but have y'all seen the tweet? I retweeted it. It was after family visit. And it is this guy just making fun of me at family visit of just bawling my eyes out. And it's how the cameraman no. just constantly is zooming in on my face of me being like, <gasps> you should, I don't think we saw that. You, can you send that to us? I would love yes, to I will tweet it at you because it is so funny. And I'm like, these cameramen really are out to get me. Like my facial expressions can never be hidden. Ever, <laughs> ever. It's and I don't even notice I'm doing it, and I'm I'm just impressed with the fact that they can catch them all the time. Like even during a challenge, I, like the one where um where Rick says I'll take all three of you to final tribal, and I like roll my eyes. Don't even know I did that, and I don't know how the cameramen are catching all of these. But it is it's a problem, everyone. But it's, I I love. But you said between the three of you. You have a folder of gifts. Like you are giftable. Kelly has a million gifts, and War Dog had the uh, not safe for work like fingers that. <laughs> oh my god! Which like Bryce always doing since I'm the Obviously, I know. Survivor. Really, FC three is a mess. We are you guys mess. one dysfunctional <laughs> family. Um, um, one time that you did though, with your, with your mouth instead of your face was when you came out and told all of your future potential boyfriends that uh, yes. if yeah, Ryan Reynolds I walks know, in the I was going to bring that up. It's all over. And unfortunately, Lauren, we, we, we don't have any surprises for you on this podcast. Like we did for He's Kelly. I here. wish we could have gotten Ryan Reynolds oh for God, you just to see happen? what you would have done. Have, has he responded to your DMs? My- <laughs> yeah. Have you been DMing him? No, I didn't. DM him. <laughs> no. No, I like watch that back and I'm like, I mean, I stand by it. Like obviously if you walk into a bar and you see Ryan Reynolds, like don't trust me. But also like if you walk into a bar and you see Blake Lively, don't trust me. Like, are you kidding me? They're perfect. If you say, this goes back to my thing about if you say you don't like Kelly and Joe, you're a liar. If you say you don't like Ryan Reynolds and Blake Lively, you're a liar. Mm-hmm. Uh, it also is probably good that I don't have a boyfriend and they saw that I um, said that I want him. So that was a win. To be that was smart. To be That's right. single when that aired is, is, is really good because that as was good. Lauren have a boyfriend moved, in this one year time span. Yeah. As <laughs> Lauren moved to LA and is like, yeah, sure, boyfriend. Just keep going to all the real fancy bars out here, hoping all yeah. the fancy clubs, hoping you're running to Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's out there now. I mean, any guy that you date for the rest of your life can now just go and be like, Oh my God, my, my girlfriend wants to, I'm, I'm if, if Ryan Reynolds is here, like I'm done. It's I know, over. I know, I know. And it, I still think, yeah, it's, it's like the Chris idol play. I stand by it. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> you it. You know, it is what it is and love him. And honestly, it's one of the things that Kelly and I like bonded over. We're like, yes, our celebrity crushes, crushes Ryan Reynolds. 
Um, I didn't actually remember saying those words in my confessional. So when I watched it back, I was like, that is funny stuff. You, <laughs> you go. That is some good content I put out. Was, <laughs> was this like, was this on like day one or two that Kelly said that Ryan Reynolds is a celebrity crush? Cause she said she was just agreeing with anything for anybody so that she could like get aligned with you. Like, did yeah, you I talk to her since? I think this is on Lesu. Okay, okay. Well, I trust people, her by that. Who knows? She probably, yeah, she probably does still just agree with me. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but yes, I do remember that. Um, I will have to probably make sure my future, future, future boyfriend does not see that and just kind of fast forwards through. But uh, who knows? You know what? Love me or hate Whatever. Me. What are the odds that he walks into a bar with you and Ryan Reynolds is there? And also he gets to meet Ryan Reynolds. So I don't feel bad for yeah, him. Yeah, it's a win for him. It's a yeah. win. And it's odds are Blake Lively is there too. And that's a win for everyone. That's a win for everyone. <laughs> I mean, you just created the best situation, Lauren. Somebody tell Ryan Reynolds to watch this video. <laughs> yeah. At Ryan Reynolds. I'm tweeting wow. at him. Yeah. <laughs> tweet at him. You should be like, watch the last five minutes of her podcast. Okay, like, hey, tune in. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, exactly. My verbal apology to my future boyfriend. I promise that if Ryan Reynolds was in a bar with you and me, I would be kind about it. <laughs> but I would still be all over Ryan Reynolds. All well, over air Tactfully, of course. Yeah, tactfully. <laughs> Yeah. Exactly. It'll be uh -huh. subtle. You wouldn't even know I was like gushing over him. It's oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. Well, I think that's it. I think that's all. That's it. Wow. wow. That's, that's it. Lauren, you were right. This was fun. Lauren is very humble. And she literally said to me, you should be, I'm fun. That's an actual text. <laughs> You should be. I'm, I was like, I'm, I'm excited great. for this one. You should be. I'm fun. No smiley oh face, no exclamation God. point. There wasn't it's even a, a period after fact. the I'm fun. It was just statement like. Statement of no. fact. It was just, yeah, I'm fun. And you know what? If, if you guys want to hang out with me, I'm fun. And you should know that. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Lauren is fun. Everybody needs to know Lauren is fun. There's no way Wardog and Kelly would hang out with her if she wasn't fun. Oh, true. 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 Yeah, wow. I've been, I'm so thankful you guys put me on here. This was so much fun. I feel honored to finish out the Less You Three Chronicles, honestly. We, I know. Yes. You're gonna, I feel like I'm going to cry. It's like now I we know, have to move it's on. It's been such a great week. Yeah. I you know. We should have We should have come, come up with that hashtag a lot earlier. Someone tweeted that at us. We should have done that last <laughs> what week. What was the tweet? Someone tweeted like, oh, you guys are like, this is the Less You Three Chronicles. And I was like, that's oh such a good, like, that's that's such so a good name. Good. That's okay. I mean, you guys will have to. Have us back on for. Guess we'll have to come back on. Cast again. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that'd be a beautiful disaster. We're we're ready for the last few three predictions power rankings episode where oh War Dog just takes over and we literally just mute him the entire time. Yeah, no we're one's ready. headphones. No one's headphones are ready. No People one's. People have been being like you and War Dog and Kelly should have a podcast and Kelly and I are like, man, we love you, War Dog. <laughs> but it would be the War Dog podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you see, like we've we've been doing this. I, I mean, I've been doing this for five years, Alex. I think you're up to like three and a half now, like yeah. almost there. But like, w we didn't. I think I said five words when War Dog was here. I introduced him, and then I was just like, "All right, War Dog, do your like, thing, man." We'll you see, got uh, see you on the other side. <laughs> yeah, he's so fun to listen to, though. He's great. He's great. Yeah, he's great. Really the good. comments are great where everyone's like, I see Phil and Alexa trying to stifle yawns. And we're like, what? No, we're like ready. We're good. Also, it was getting late. Okay. It was, it was getting late. My Look, time. I won't lie. I yawned once or twice during this. Cool it's night. not because I'm bored. I'm just like, you're it's, tired. It's hard to sit here for, for yeah, three and a half. I, I know. My, my are we at two hours yet? We're, we're at two hours and 38 minutes. We. Someone yeah, look at that face. Lauren can't believe that. Oh, man. Yeah. I'm so sorry to everyone who's been listening to me for two and a half hours. So you're about to, so you might have the fourth longest podcast. It would be War Dog, Troy Zan, or sorry, War Dog, Fair Play, Troy Zan, you. You're going to end up with the fourth longest podcast. I mean, I did. Longest play, female podcast. I did play a lot of days. You, you did, did play a lot of days. You did do a lot of things too. Like there's a lot, a lot to talk about. With yeah, you. A lot of content. You did do a lot of things. Oh my God. Well, thank you all so much for having me. This was so much fun. I appreciate it. And I love y'all's podcast. You guys are incredible. Thank, well, thank you. you Lauren. I'll make sure to be nicer to you in your next preseason. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be any nicer than saying you're going to win, even with those videos. If, if That's incredible. I mean, you have to give me some credit, like for saying you're going to win to an audience after watching those videos. Like, Honestly, that's awesome. some dedication. I mean, really, the only one I watched was like my Baywatch slow motion running. And it's like, gun, 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 gun. how fun is it to film that? <laughs> 
I remember filming. Where they like go go run in a flirtatious way. Yeah, I remember watching that or filming it and being like, oh God, my dad is not going to be happy. <laughs> oh, Lauren, we have to talk and we're going to talk off podcast, but I have to ask you a question about a finale moment uh, for, for sure. But, <laughs> but that's going to be off podcast for sure. Because um, we're a PG, we're PG. But unquote. anyway, Alexa, why don't you tell the people what's coming up this weekend when we go away from the Lesu 3? We have a big weekend coming up. First of all, in case anybody wasn't aware, tomorrow is my and Kelly Wentworth's birthday. So Friday is a big day. But more importantly... Time is it in? Oh no! You have twenty one minutes until my birthday. Twenty one minutes until my birthday. Um, I'm twelve tequila shots deep, so I am ready (laughs) to go. Um, but for those of you who think that we only talk to the Lesu crew, we are wrapping up the Lesu Three Chronicles, and we are swapping tribes to the Kama tribe this weekend. Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific, we are talking to Eric Halfman. Super excited to talk to him. Uh, he super excited. He tweeted out earlier, but uh, we have a time. Super excited to talk to him. And then Sunday night, we are talking to the Kama Challenge Beast, Aurora McCrary, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern time. We have a really great weekend. We're super excited. And Lauren, we loved having you on. Thank you so, oh, so much thank for you coming. Guys for having me. And what is um, that? Say? It's what, the what same that? one. I just don't want oh. anybody to forget. Oh, yeah. We have, we, yeah, if we want to hold up our, our love actually signs. But <laughs> with that, keep those up. For those of you who weren't aware, Lauren was a D1 athlete. She's telling everybody now. <laughs> Make sure to follow us on Facebook. <laughs> too. Follow us on I want everybody Facebook. to know. Follow us on Facebook. <laughs> Like us on Twitter, follow us on Instagram, give us five stars on iTunes. Patreon, as don't a, forget it. I know, I'm in the middle of it, <laughs> Phil. For those of you who don't know, as of a couple hours ago, we are on Spotify now. Everyone who had an Android phone could never listen to us on their phone for it. Now you're on Spotify. Follow us on Spotify. I don't even know how you do that. And become a patron if you guys want more of us talking. We have it for you. We just yeah. did a Q&A podcast last night. We're doing a retrospective podcast for our $10 patrons. Go to patreon.com backslash survivor specialist, and we will give you more content if you pay us. Lauren, <laughs> we love having you on. Everyone have a great night, and we will see you guys on Saturday. Bye.